So welcome everybody to the Crypt of the Devil Lich post-mortem for our actual play. And if you're curious as to what actual play I'm referring to, I'm referring to the one that I messed up on by forgetting to record my own audio. So that actual play will be lost to time um, until I get like an AI voiceover for myself and then we can just dub oh. that in. Um, but until that day comes, right now we are going to just talk about uh, Crypt of the Devil Lich. We were able to get three sessions in and I'm joined by all the players here. So what we're going to do is I'll have each of you guys introduce yourself, talk about uh, what character you played, and just some quick thoughts on how you felt about Crypt of the Devil Lich. Also, I will say right now, obviously, spoilers, spoilers all the way. Um, we're mostly just going to cover the first level because that's as far as we got. <laughs> but if you don't want spoilers, just, yeah, <laughs> turn off the video now. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Steve. Hello, I am Steve. Uh, I played Mother Varen in the game uh she's a cleric of justicia did i say it right that one time yeah you did you did you <laughs> said it right for the first time <laughs> um and and as a quick thought on the game i thought it was i thought it was both very similar to a dungeons and dragons module uh tomb of annihilation uh oh, tomb of wars thank you yeah. i'll sadly say i didn't enjoy the module yeah. <laughs> In the same way that I didn't enjoy Tomb of Horrors um, <laughs> for what the module is time, trying to accomplish. And I think that's primarily where I come from, uh, in my opinion of this, is that I'm not sure what the module is trying to accomplish mm. by playing it. You can tell me what the module is trying to accomplish, but when I'm playing it, I don't feel like it's it's like I understand what it's trying to do. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt about it. No, brutal and honest. I like it. All right. Uh, Dan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm Dan, and uh, yeah, I played Rin of Briarwood, and uh, yeah, as far as my feelings on the module, I think I share Steve's feelings in that this seemed like uh, that Tomb of Horrors experience, that like trap, unfair trap dungeon kind of thing, and that's kind of why I was interested in playing it, and why I'm glad I played it, but... I had fun because I was playing with you guys mm. you know, with this group I and mean, you know I yeah I don't I'm glad I had the experience uh it's not like a style that I'm super into mm. I I don't know that anybody really is it's almost it's like a novelty dungeon kind of thing you know it's yeah. like you play it to say you have played it exactly it's like uh you know like Tomb of Horrors is this rite of passage kind of a thing that that people you know I go well, I went back and I played that old school module and I made it and you know that, that's kind of what this felt like to some degree with a little little bit of DCC twist yeah. uh, I thought the characters were all really cool I loved my character uh I loved the best part about it was casting these like crazy high level spells. Uh, that was a blast. Um, <laughs> yeah. So once my spells were gone, I sabotaged the entire group and yeah. But you know, I, I think yeah. I think that's fair. It's very much like trying a super like spicy dish or hot sauce like at a at a party. Yeah. yeah. Like or at, at, a, yeah. at a restaurant <laughs> at a party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you have to sign a waiver to play crypto. Exactly. It's that kind of thing, yeah. Um all right. It's um, like you know you might not have fun, but yeah. you're gonna play it anyway. It's just about doing it, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Martin, you are next. So I'm Martin and I was playing Jinx and Jinx was a level 7 wizard, uh, a bit of a pyromancer. I'm not quite sure what to say about Jinx. She was uh, she was good fun to play and it was definitely fun to play with some of the higher level DCC spells. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely crazy as always. <laughs> it was a character I made think. for you because you love playing. Uh, you've played Why several like pyromancers in my, yeah. in my game so far. So it was a perfect, <laughs> it was a perfect fit. <laughs> anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think like, uh, like Dan and Steve said, it was very much a, a different kind of scenario and i think um it's very easy to kind of go into these things and think oh i know i'm gonna gonna get to the end and, and we're definitely gonna make it and, and all the rest of it and i think you need to remember with the tournament art style stuff it's very much a case of how far are we going to get through you know compared to the next person rather than are we going to get to the end because the answer is no no you're not <laughs> uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and honestly i think i went easy in certain parts because i got rid of certain stuff whereas i'm yeah. sure gms running it as the book uh would probably be even bigger dicks but i was like there's only there's only so much of your dick i can rip off before you guys just start having a really really bad time you know um and as like classic <laughs> yeah. saying goes uh that we have i, here I think you really have yeah. to you have to trust your gm like big time yeah. to be able to do yeah. that and you gotta trust yeah. your players too like i asked you guys because i knew yeah. i knew you guys would like 
basically have the reaction I assumed you guys would have, you know, where you guys were going to be genuinely fucking upset that things went wrong. Because I, I have I have some friends who are like that, who are like, they really sure. don't like losing at all. I'm like, I'm not going to invite you to this because you can't turn <laughs> off and you're going to get fucking murked. So, uh, yeah, did you have any other thoughts there, Mark? Oh, uh, lots of them, but, um, but we'll... quite how many you want now and oh, later. Yeah, no, yeah. I, just, uh, I just didn't know if I cut you off there at all. But yeah, we'll no, go no, no. finally with uh, John Real then. Good. Ahoy, ahoy. Uh, I'm John. I played the character of a Greege, a level 7 dwarf. And uh, I never got to hit things so many times with a hammer, I'll tell you that. I appreciate the design for the type of dungeon it is setting out to be. I think it actually succeeds in what it's trying to be a dick rip. <laughs> <laughs> um, to borrow a Canadianism. Um, what I will say is that, myself and Alex have talked about this, the DCC adaption is kind of bad. Mm -hmm. and Goodman Games public own both. Yeah. Yeah, I, it makes me kind of like, oh, wow, I'm glad I'm not in, like, the judges group where I'd be running stuff that they haven't published, but that mm -hmm. they've written. Because if that's the kind of standard, like, there's stuff there that I'm like, was that on purpose? Was that just because you didn't La care? Laziness. Yeah. Yeah, like, so, like it, it is mm -hmm. tough because it was in development for a long time. And there's obviously a lot to it. Like, I mean, there's like, oh, totally. eight, there's, there's like, so, there's like, what, 50 handouts? There's a shitload of handouts. There's a shitload yeah. of different rooms that are crazy. A bunch Each of things. room is. Yeah. And like, I'll, I'll be reiterating this numerous times, I'm sure, throughout this conversation. Each room is a really good tough encounter. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that mm. some of them are bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's funny you said, John, because that actually leads perfectly into what I was going to say before we get into the dungeon, which is mm -hmm. just that my quick review of this, because I probably won't be doing a whole review video on this thing at this point, um, with the breakdown video already out, is that I think overall, for being that sort of Tomb of thing, it's pretty good for that. Though I would recommend more as just a module to take rooms from yep. and put into different dungeons mm -hmm. like the amount of rooms you guys went through that would make good final rooms or at least part of a good final room kind of thing or just mm -hmm. things throw in here and there uh it's good for that but yeah i won't go too deep into the criticism but from what i just because I, I don't want to get anything wrong but i will say this is clearly a thing where the 5e uh version took precedence and then they sort of poured that to dcc which is just really weird since Goodman games like makes dcc but there's stuff like history and religion checks that with dcs or i'm like that's a 5e thing there's stuff about like smith's tools and those things of like proficiency and stuff mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. fucking vampire spawn the first one a lot of things that are fine that they poured over in some ways but there's so mm -hmm. much where it's obvious that like 5e came first and then they took that and went how do we do this there's also like a magic item missing from the dcc version that just says like in it's an appendix xx and i was like that's not that's not an appendix. That sounds like XX sounds like what you guys just put in there as like the Filler. the placeholder. placeholder. Yeah. placeholder. There's typos, placeholder, yeah. which overall wouldn't be too much of an issue. But with some of these rooms being like four pages long because they're so complex, complicated. That is a problem. Yeah, yeah like they're like they're. We'll get into yeah. it. But there was literally a room where I don't know if any of you guys end up looking at the book after. But there's that room with mm -hmm. the with the anti magic field that I fucked up because I was like, shit, this but room like, has like four not? different That's things so to it. Complicated. Yeah, and I was just like, god damn, I'm I'm confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that's basically my, my quick review on it, is that I enjoyed it, but I do think, like Dan said, a lot of it was running it for you guys. Um, this was, this was, the whole point of this was to just run a thing out of my comfort zone. Yeah, this is not something I would probably run regularly, but I will probably steal from this for future games with you guys <laughs> yeah. at some yeah. point. Uh... Um, well, I, I think um, that's the important thing to take from, from our experience is that it was incredibly enjoyable because of the group. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't, yeah. uh, again, from my opinion, it wasn't enjoyable because of the module that we ran, mm -hmm. but it was enjoyable because you guys are a great group yeah. that are just funny and, and, and easygoing and you, while you take the game both seriously, but not too seriously mm -hmm. as to like get angry over minor things. Yeah. And for me, that was incredibly enjoyable. For sure. Agreed. Um, and I will say, yeah. I had, this is the most fucking prep work I've done by far for any of the APs yeah. so far, because god damn. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just knew I had to, otherwise we'd be in so much trouble just trying to, like, deal with this, like, super high level stuff. The foundry, all the foundry stuff you set up was, was nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I had also a lot of issues, because also on top of this, the VTT maps, the resolution on them were pretty small compared to other VTT mm -hmm. maps, which is also an issue, mm -hmm. so I had to mess around those mm -hmm. a lot, but but yeah, outside of that, I think that's pretty much all my sort of beginning thoughts. I guess we can just get into the dungeon, and basically what I'm thinking of doing is just sort of having 
we'll go room to room. I'll have you guys sort of describe what you remember from that room, and then I'll sort of fill in any blanks. We can talk about how how those rooms went. But essentially, mm -hmm. the premise of this of this game was that you guys heard about that there was you know this devil lich that was coming back to life, or coming back to power. You went to a monastery that was like full of monks that got murdered. It led you to the actual crypt. You heard some rumors about like a broken sword that defeated her i could be wrong on when you guys learn that sort of stuff but in general you guys basically learned oh big bad evil uh in this dungeon let's go there wasn't there wasn't too much fluff in terms of like a storyline <laughs> even though there was like a whole page of <laughs> description yeah and so after that was you guys basically starting off so i don't know if i'll let you guys take it away i don't know if anybody wants to describe how they remember the first sort of two parts kind of <sighs> It starts off with a bullshit trap. That's <laughs> <laughs> the pattern for things to come. John, I'm imagining yeah. a storybook as you're reading that, like a storybook opening, and like it starts with a <laughs> bullshit Once trap. Once upon a time, there was yeah, a exactly. bullshit trap. <laughs> this bullshit trap was not mechanical. It was magical in nature. Mm. <laughs> when really that should have been like a spike trap instead of like the, the pebbles under your feet turn to spikes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah. as you step in the pebbles under your feet will turn to spikes mm -hmm. um, I think um, John is just bitter because he was the only one that got hurt by the I, that is <laughs> true yeah. yes um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it was um, it's a perfect introduction to the whole yeah. module it, like, yeah, set it, it, up. it was yeah. the first yeah. step Psych. Like, as soon step. as we had control of our characters our, the very first thing objective we had was to walk through a cave opening <laughs> and the, it's like okay, I, I take my first step into the dungeon. Spike trap, just <laughs> just a magic well, the door turns spikes. into spikes. Yeah, <laughs> Steve, you, you detected you know magic and had, didn't find any like traps or anything. Yeah. You you know you saw there was like I hadn't things used and, like, yeah. evil yet. I hadn't detect yeah. evil was supposed to find traps. Yeah, and I was like, okay, let's just walk in and get our bearings. Nope. Well, <laughs> Alex, it, it, is, it, he's got to say that it's funny. I was I was. I looked at that first um, hand out, which was the picture of the teeth at the, at the mm -hmm. cave mouth, and I thought, fuck it. What I really want to do now is get Jinx to cast some sort of fireball and just lob it to the end of this <laughs> thing. But I thought, that would be ridiculous. I mean, no one else would do that. And then we got murdered by spikes. And yeah. I mean, there definitely wouldn't be five, four vampires on the ceiling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I didn't learn my lesson when we were in there. I thought, oh, we'll start off with a little bit of scorching yeah. ray. We'll build it up. You know? <laughs> yeah. No <Total> boy error. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. crazy. We went in so innocently into that first room, I think. We kind of were like wandering in. And there was a guy there, and he was like raving like a lunatic and rhyming things. And we were like, oh, maybe we can like talk to this guy yeah. or something. And then he immediately mind controlled uh, Varen and started stabbing people. And uh, yeah, vampires dropped from the ceiling, and they were I really fucking tough. I will, <laughs> I will point out it was for Alex's lack of trying because he did say. This isn't a dungeon where you can talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, you he guys can totally try, said that to us. But just letting you know, it's it's mostly <laughs> just going to be 99% combat for most of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good point. What's funny with him, too, though, is that the, the I actually uh, gave you guys a different token that you saw before I changed him over because mm -hmm. the token they give you makes him obviously look evil. Like, he just has, <laughs> like, a bloody hand and he has got, like, fangs. Or, I'm like, <laughs> it says he's like disguised as just a crazy old guy at first, basically, or like just that, like it's not clear he's a vampire. Yeah. But you see the picture, and you're like, okay, well, that's obviously some sort of <laughs> horrifying monster. <laughs> he's clearly the head vampire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened in the first room. You guys open up, you guys go into that cave, and then you get attacked by that vampire and his four vampire spawn who jump down. Dude, There's also the vampire spawns were it was like it was like fighting five Draculas. Yeah. It wasn't like oh yeah, it was like yeah. well because they like, one has yeah. five the power strods. Of. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it, it was it's nuts. Absurd. And also those two braziers uh, st uh, stop Turn Unholy. So you also have to deal with those. We're like, Steve learned that right away when he did Turn Unholy. Even though it failed, I think because I think you fumbled. And I thought because, and I'm glad I did it just because you fumbled so much in that fight, in our fucking game. I'm glad I gave it to you. I was like, you fumbled, you kind of know it's like the braziers kind of suck up the Turn Unholy. Maybe that's what like caused the fumble kind of thing. So you kind of learned right away, like, okay, well, Turn Unholy is not going to work on these guys. I was going to say, um, even if you hadn't had said that, that the, yeah. the Brazers were stopping the turn on Holy. By the end of the campaign that we had, I would have just assumed that everything 
was immune yeah. to everything that I could do. That's what I was leading to <laughs> yeah. with John, because John yeah. is a yeah. specific thing that I thought was funny. <laughs> I so for the for the viewer <laughs> slash listener, we played with the pre gens provided, <clears throat> and we all had magical items. We all were like, as we said, we were seventh level, so we were pretty fucking cool. So in the first room, I was like, oh boy, I've got a magic hammer that has a bane for vampires where I crit on a 19 or 20. <laughs> All the vampires, even the vampire spawn, are immune to crits. And also, almost immune? everything in this fucking dungeon crits. is immune to crits. Yep. <laughs> I don't see the point. <laughs> and What kind of bullshit is that? I know, right? And the thing is, <laughs> is that mean... like... You can start, go ahead, Dad. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that's all I'm saying. I'm yeah. just exasperated. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> and, like, maybe maybe I, I should have ruled it that, like, your thing overpowers the immunity to crits, but there's nothing that says it on the thing that, like, this yeah. negates the vampire um, the vampire immunity to criticals. Which, it just yeah, says like, you have it. You crit on a vampire even if they're immune to crits. Yeah. would have eaten, mm. And that would even tell me, like, oh, shit, vampires are immune to crits? Yeah. What kind of sadistic fuck mm. makes a creature, like, a base level, like, fir first creature through the door immune to crit? Yeah. yeah. What? Why? Oh, Which this also... is, um... oh, go ahead, Go ahead, Steve. I was going to say, this, this, uh, this is where another example of, I think, um, they focused too much on the 5e, and their transfer over was really weak, because vampires in 5e aren't immune to crits, and a, a, a Bane weapon in 5e would be great. But if you transfer it over to DCC and you don't adjust, then you end up having a very frustrated player going, then what's what? the fucking point? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's what, I think that's a good uh, point. Yeah. One thing too, to be to be clear is also that I, I don't think anybody else here has looked at the 5e versions. So I don't know if they also gave the 5e vampires an extra crit at all or anything. Because all I had was that certain things like the liches, golems, and vampires, and maybe a few other ones, all had like basic, here's what all the different vampires, because there's more vampires in the throughout the dungeon yeah, but here's what all the vampires golems and these guys have which is like immunities immunity to these things that sort of stuff so like the vampire spawn got them just because they're a vampire type which i think is is fine it's just weird that you gave yeah. somebody the first pre-gen somebody that like that, that can create against vampires and in the first room go oh fuck me i guess i can't use this um, but like why have a weapon <laughs> that can crit against vampires if vampires are immune to crits yeah my well, only was, guess is a lot just, of that is just going off the yeah, DCC strange. magic weapon stuff where you roll randomly on what you get uh, certain abilities on and maybe mm. but you guys designed they designed yeah, pregens for this thing so you don't need to worry game. about that stuff yeah. Harry wonders not even the 5th edition D&D stuff but like how much of this came out of this being a 3.5 scenario where yeah. people Update brought their own pregens yeah. Yeah. because 3.5 stuff was fucking swing you know mm -hmm. like if you were built for something that was what you did. <laughs> if you had someone that was built for vampire fighting, that was what they did. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious as to like... Now, I know that they've put out the designer diaries as part of the digital downloads. Uh, I haven't read them. You know, there's an awful lot of stuff where you're kind of like, this is a choice. <laughs> <laughs> like, for an example of a choice. So I'm supposed to believe this entire crypt was built to um, contain the lich, the devil lich, because she has the capacity to come back, you know, what with being a lich. How come all the doors are lined with lead? <laughs> How come every single door is lined with lead? Which, conveniently, because it turns out Detect Magic is Superman rules, so... And Detect Evil, too. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It oh, really doesn't uh, work through They're all the same spell, effectively. Yeah. Because every every yes. door has a has description that, like, all the room doors have are lined with lead and can't be seen through by any magical means. Mm -hmm. is why I had for every yeah. door in that. At least, at least the first level uh, had yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, a, it's that, like, Tomb of Horrors yeah. tournament attitude. That's, that's yeah. all that is, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would argue that, like, this is sort of basically a funhouse dungeon to an extent where I would throw yeah. out any sort of logic or ideas like that personally. Like, that stuff doesn't bother me too much. I, oh, totally. I'm like, look, yeah. I get it. It's, part, it's just because it's part of the dungeon. But I'm like, does that mean when this place was being built, you know, all, how, what, four floors? Uh, Three um, floors, four bonus if you want to do the, the bonus fourth yeah, floor. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Every level of this dungeon, someone was like, no, 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 no. These wooden doors need to be lined with lead <laughs> on the inside. So they need to actually be double wide, double thick doors <laughs> with a good layer of lead in the middle. <laughs> and you're just there like, 
Yeah. Okay. It's best not to think about who builds these dungeons. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, like playing, it's like playing Elden Rings. It's like, who the fuck built this shit? <laughs> oh, those like Elden Ring lore YouTubers, they'll get mad about that. They'll yeah, tell you exactly yeah. who made this. I know. Vata <laughs> Vidya, I know, I know. Um, I will say, though, with the crypt, what's funny, this is this actually makes less sense, I think, going off of what you're mm -hmm. saying there, John. Um, the crypt is actually, I think... Firstly, she was sealed down there, but I think everything in there, she's actually designed. She's had her workers, like the... Well, as I recall, isn't it actually her secret base that they're, like, yeah, they sealed her up in here? Basically, yeah. Uh, so she basically turned right. it into a thing. So I guess it makes sense that she would it's not... Like Pablo Escobar, yeah. when he got put in his own prison, that, like, he designed and, like, yeah. put his own guards in and shit like that. <laughs> well, actually, I don't actually, want someone to assassinate me in prison. <laughs> since it doesn't really matter now, and this is going to be spoilers for the entire story... The whole point, the whole basically, the, the one through line, other than just going from room to room, mm -hmm. is that you guys are going to get the sword together. Mm -hmm. The sword's actually, Flattery. is actually an evil sword. Um, <laughs> it actually, it, like, you put the sword together, and the sword, the name you think it is, is actually has a different name. They fuck with you in a few different places to mess with, like, the name itself. That's the sword she needs to basically get out of here. So you basically bring her the sword. That's why she wants adventures coming Brilliant. in and doing stuff. But then she <laughs> wants them to go through really harrowing things to get it and then bring it to her and i'm sure i'm messing up some details that make it make more sense but essentially yeah that it's a sentient sword that'll be like oh we must go defeat the 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 devil lich take me to her and blah, 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 and like really play that up and it'll turn out it's like aha i was actually true death all along or whatever the the whatever the name is for that sword and then it'll yeah now i have the sword <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's like yes <laughs> i'm reunited with my my evil sword everyone make a save or die roll yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'd say all the logic what stuff. I love, no, no, what window. I love is that the fucking the vampire warns you about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no, a crazy person saying something at the start of the dungeon. Okay, everything he says is true. <laughs> <laughs> everything that fucker said is true. Yeah. It's like gotta, you gotta get a dragon heart. I'm like, yeah, we gotta get dragon heart for that fucking mummified dragon that I remembered the art for. <laughs> <laughs> there are some really cool scenario encounters in here, but mm. a, a mummified dragon should not be like a mini boss. A, a dragon. <laughs> Yeah, mummified dragons should be end of campaign boss. <laughs> mummified dragon in a room full of bones. <laughs> that's just a Dark Souls yeah. boss, by the way. Just, yeah. I, listen, John, that's just a tier three five uh, e like random encounter, mummified dragon, <laughs> and it takes you three and a half hours to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's epic. <laughs> so, so yeah, I read the entire first floor's map, and I uh, so for the listener when we were playing. Uh, Steve used Detect Evil, got a pretty high result on that, and that meant that he could see all traps. Alex found this a relief for the second room we went into. Because how the fuck are you supposed to describe oh, yeah. that room to players? And <laughs> yeah. track yeah. of... So, listener, when you activate half over half the traps in the room, they change the orientation of the room, which is already lined with doors numbered one through eight. And it just basically goes click, except the tr doors are also locked and bullshit traps mm -hmm. and stuff. It's, it's I'm just like I'm getting like a headache this? looking at the room. Like just it's yeah dumb. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. So, there's, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, it's, it's, it opened the door dumb. and two go two ghosts that were, shades that were in there were just basically saw the door and were like, oh fucking finally and left. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. We didn't, we didn't try and stop them. I, look, I relate to the shades. <laughs> <laughs> They've just been stepping on the traps that keep reorientating the doors, and like, but how do the doors reorient? It's very weird. So yeah, so there's uh, just so just to go through it really quickly. Basically, it's a circular yeah. room, and there's two types of traps. There's they're all plate traps. Some of them is poison gas traps that will poison you guys and and give you shit. And then almost every one of the doors also has traps. One of them being a save or die trap, by the way. So if you fail oh that, gosh. instant death. But Ugh. what happens is that every time you click on one of the proper spinning pressure plates, the room starts to spin without the players knowing because it's the room itself spinning with the doors. So if the players open any of the doors, if they, you know, get past the poison and all that sort of stuff, they just see, like, the, the room spinning around. And every time you click on the pressure plate again, it spins a different direction. So there's all that. There's the ghosts. There's 
all these other things. There's also, you mm. guys didn't even really figure out the puzzle. You guys just broke the doors down, which is totally fine by me. But there's like, you had to use a crossbow bolt instead of an arrow bolt to get through the different doors. That's the key. If you'll notice, like the, the compass yeah. rose in the middle has like either a crossbow bolt or arrow bolts as the description. Uh, anyway, yeah. Like, so Steve. But if you look at the handout for that, yeah, they're not obviously they, they does different. does not show that. <laughs> Which is kind of the entire point yeah. of such a handout. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> unless you want to literally be like, hey, this has a bunch of arrows, and some of the arrows are different. You're supposed to, like, get, like, the idea there would be to give the handout, and the handout is the thing the player yeah. has to look at. Mm hmm. It, it doesn't even work as its own type of thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, we bypassed all that because, uh, Steve, <laughs> you. Um, you cast Detect Evil, which at a certain level uh, sees, all evil, sees all harmful traps or all traps at a certain point. Anything that intends to harm the party <laughs> yeah. is great. Um, <laughs> it is a yeah, weird one because spell. it's like DCC as a game doesn't have an evil alignment. It's just mm -hmm. chaos and order. Mm -hmm. It's just, so it's like, why are we talking about detect evil? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's trying, well, that's what makes it, that's what makes it confusing, right? Because Steve said this, where he was like, he did this, the casting, and then learned afterwards, he got like a super high cast, like, oh, wait, this actually like, this shows me traps and everything, like, things are just potentially harmful to me. It shows and, uh, you things that are magical. It's yeah. just a fucking miscellaneous detect things bag. And I, I get that, like, DCC magic is its own thing. Mm -hmm. Um... It's just that it's like, guys, Goodman Games, don't call something a name that isn't what it does, even at the lowest or highest level. At no level does it detect evil. It always is just detects hazards and threats and bad intent. I'm like, that's not necessarily evil. That's just threats. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, just oh, I it's don't know. evil from a, a different that's perspective. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I was talking to Alex about this a little while ago, but I um I think it's it's one of those holdovers from like there was a spell called Detect Evil in a previous edition yeah. of a different game, yeah. and it's like oh we're gonna make ours we're gonna we need the we need Detect Evil as well. Well, what's it do? Because we don't have an evil alignment because mm -hmm. it's not based right. on alignment, and it's like well then they shouldn't have done that. They should have created a spell that was called Detect Danger. Because that's what it does. The, the whole detective spell. That, that would be a more clear yeah. description. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just one of those things that just tech danger. because we because we we were we had Steve casting this on a fucking loop. Just it yeah. was yeah. <laughs> effectively. Yeah. Oh, did that run out? Yeah, refresh. Um, <laughs> that is like this style of play though does kind of lead to that. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That procedural yeah. thing was, exactly. yeah, you cast that, you know, you got the character searching for traps, you got the character yeah. searching for secret doors, and like that. You well, you should be searching for secret up. doors, Dan. <laughs> I, I, you know, looking at the map, I yeah. think I found. No, no, I think no, I no, no, you totally all. did. It was just the, the room will go to it in, in, in a little while. I just remember being like, you guys, one of you guys has a thing that might help you here. And you guys are like, I don't know what you're talking about. No. <laughs> but, yeah. Alex being crazy. Fair. That room is yeah. Jesus. And yeah. we'll talk about it momentarily. Um, um, but I did, it's more I horseshit than the average horseshit. Yeah. Room. I will say, though, before we move on, I just want to go back to the first room for a second. Because, Dan, yeah. you found the secret door that, that leads to the actual crypt. Yeah. But there is a mm. false door, which is so obviously meant to, like, it has a beautiful, like, colored picture of, like, um, there's, like, these bronze red doors, like a skull and snake and stuff. Um, which yeah. obviously looks like, oh, this is obviously the entrance, um, which I think you guys said was like a Tomb of Horrors callback, because the actual entrance yeah. to Tomb of Horrors, you have to like, what, dig or like, break down a wall or something to well, actually were, find it? Something like that. So there were two, there were two fake entrances. I, I have a map here. <laughs> this, is, this isn't going to work, is it? <laughs> here we go. So, <laughs> as a false one, another false one. And the entrance is actually down there. And oh, I think okay. you've got to scrape something off the wall in order to find that one to yeah, yeah. take you in there. So but, it must uh, have been sort of just that sort of a reference, that sort of thing. Because oh, basically much. the only way you can open the door, I think, is with um, the cleric casting like a magical, uh, like some sort of like, I think like sanctify or some shit. Any other attempt to open it, and also when you attempt it properly, uh, it has magical damage that blows back on you. And then when you finally do open it, while it still has damage to you, it opens up to just a stone slab saying, careful who you trust, which is just such a- I'm so like, glad we didn't go yeah, through that. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I cannot <laughs> wait for these guys to go here. But then Dan was like, I'm going to search for secret doors. I'm like, damn you, Dan. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad yeah. that wasn't an experience we had. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to mention that because I, I thought that was such. When I read that in the beginning, I was like, oh, God damn, this dungeon is such a fuck you to the players. This is That's so mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should we go to, to Should we go to the hallway three? Because I was thinking of going in. Yeah. Room yeah. Six, yeah. We, did, we did go to room six after room two, but we, we yeah. kind of hit yeah. the the a literal and figurative wall, um, and turned around and went back through to hall three. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't make a lot of progress in hall in room six mm-hmm. before. Before room three. No, nope, makes and sense. That's not entirely our fault, is it, Alex? <laughs> no. Is it, Alex? No, it's, it's <laughs> not your fault. Um, it's the book's fault. Uh, fuck yeah. that description in that thing. Uh, it's like it's like three layers of complexity, maybe four, depending <laughs> on how you want to look at it. Um, where I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> We had a um, simple Nufi guiding us, guys. It wasn't yeah. gonna be. Yeah. To be yeah, to be fair to the players, I fucked up um, the description because I was confused as to how something worked because it wasn't very clear. So I forgive. But myself. having read that, <laughs> I'm now like, how the fuck was he supposed to? Like your book should be written in such a way that it is crystal clear what you mean, mm-hmm. what's happening in mm-hmm. a room when you enter it, and what the like. Not for the players, for the GM. Yeah. 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 I don't think it being like a remake of an older module is like forgiveness for not having that, which... No, that's actually know, worse I, in a certain way, like, because you've yeah. written it once already. Mm-hmm. You just didn't publish yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. We'll go in chronological order here. So yeah, we'll go to, to three, mm-hmm. which I'll let you guys describe. This this was a great one, because I think it freaked you guys out quite a bit, which is like the statue hall. Um, so I don't know what, who wants to describe it from um, memory. Go ahead, I'm Martin. just gonna yeah I'm just gonna jump in there so th- this this one is still freaking me out so there's this mm-hmm. basically this room of statues that go go down and and then there's a door at the end mm-hmm. and I still but was there anything you missed out I mean I'm still to this day no. wondering nope. hey, it's got to be the only room in the dungeon that doesn't kill you exactly yeah that's ba- that's basically it that, that the one you're expecting right now is exactly yeah <laughs> It, it, it wanted to fuck with you because you guys had dealt with so much already in, like, in the first probably yeah. two rooms that it was like mm-hmm. we'll give you just a room that'll just that's just there just to freak you out. Um, it did. Yeah, exactly. It had the <laughs> it exact. Still is. You guys are just like. <laughs> so basically, for the for anybody listening, it's just um a just a long hallway with I believe like ten pairs of statues, maybe eight. There's also a sailors on the Star of Sea reference as well yes, because there's two statues. Chaos Lord brothers that are that are facing each other. So that's like a, a, a just a little nod to that module mm-hmm. but yeah no it's they're just statues there's no puzzle there's no danger <laughs> I'm, there's I'm nothing on the, the ceiling description your... right now yeah. the, the description says there's nothing special about this hallway yet the judge should plan the players fears and possibly get them to waste precious time <laughs> yeah. yeah so you see the tone of this dungeon <laughs> yeah. it's quite adversarial yeah it's uh, super adversarial big time big time that's funny um uh... Uh, but after that, because there's not much else to talk about that one. That one just I yeah, love it, that. It, I, I, I kind of love that yeah. to be honest. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, no, yeah. absolutely, it's great. Because I remember you guys also being freaked out about leaving it behind you in case they were like it was like a thing where they're gonna be triggered like after you. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So next we have that hallway that would lead to room four and five. You guys didn't go to room four, so I'll just cover that real quick. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, I honestly thought that was going to be a TPK because at the end of session two, you guys did five, which we'll get to in a bit. You guys are going to go into room four, but then you decided not to go in there. Um, and basically, yeah. room four is this old library, lots of cursed, crazy books that could deal uh, that could cause issues for you guys. There's also this guy called the Libractus, I believe it's called, where he's just like this undead librarian type. And the big spooky thing is that hidden, very, very well hidden, is this another one of those golems. I forgot what what's it called. It's called like a, a nightmare, golem. nightmare golem. Nightmare golem. Yeah. So it would basically <laughs> it, it can cast the web spell. Basically, it can web you guys and also drag people up. So I was going to go on the ceiling. Yeah, exactly. So I was going to go for like Martin and Rin because you guys would have been like the heart, like the Rin. You you need your range for the for law stuff and like so it would mm-hmm. grab you guys up, probably killed you guys pretty fast, and then gone for you guys. And the other thing that's crazy, and this is this is great against you, Jinx. Is that any fire, even like torches, could cause stuff to catch on fire if things aren't smart. So if you did like a fireball or a scorching ray, the whole place starts going, um, and it just it adds to the to the fucking to all that extra shit. Um. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm really glad we didn't go in that horrible fucking room, Alex. I want you to show what the fucking nightmare golem looks like. Yeah. Show the full page. Yeah. I will. I will put it. I will put it on screen. I was gonna show you guys that picture too. The handouts. Um, were all pretty awesome, I thought. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Um, Even if they didn't show the details, they should have. But that feels like it's a, dis- a lack of communication yeah. between yeah. A yeah. and B. Yeah, for sure. Our department and yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's doing like the Spider-Man gag where it's on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super creepy. Yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah. I looked. I saw this one uh, a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys didn't go into that one. That one also has a has a ring puzzle um, that has that plays on the True Death, uh, the name of the sword. Um, if you guys find it where like you just have to put in like combination but yeah but you guys never did that one which is fine um because you guys did five which is the room that's important because it has the shard so uh do you guys want to tell me about room five because that was a fun room and i think that was most i think the vampire fight was most of the first session i think session two was basically just this fight in this room we yeah. had a short one because i had a scheduling conflict right. so we kind of we only had time for one room at work it turned out yeah that was uh, that was the room with all the giant the golems with like the, uh, the black orbs yeah. or whatever, and uh, that was the first time so, Rin cast the dreaming, I believe. It I was thought, actually, I think yeah. you cast the dreaming in the vampire room, didn't you? you I thought you cast it there. Maybe I, I know. I don't the first think time I we did, got the extra so. actions from it though. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was. But yeah, but yeah, you got the extra actions from it. So yeah, how that how that turn out, Dan? You wanna? I'll let you, uh... Well, this fucking spell, the dreaming, uh, has the ability to give everyone in the party like multiple extra actions each turn. And this time, it gave us all three extra actions plus three to all ACs, and I think reflex saves and, and attack. Yeah, uh, it, it, it just it just got absurd. Like yeah. everybody had was was going like five times a turn. Yeah, and, because we had to action uh, dice. <laughs> yep because yeah, we already seconds. had two yeah so it was it was crazy um <laughs> scorching rays um once the golems went down uh these murder wasp things <laughs> came out of them Dan, uh, i feel uh, like mother, murder wasps is a bit of a bit of an understatement <laughs> <laughs> hell what are, is what i wrote down swarms of wasps. large hornets from hell <laughs> yeah, literally <laughs> um mother Baron was also casting a uh, blessing which was giving us like plus four to all our checks yeah. as well yeah. so we had like these crazy like stat bonuses <laughs> like modifiers on all our roles which i all that i thought was just really fun mm-hmm. to yeah. do and, and cool whatever yeah um yeah agreed it was rolling like fucking a 30 every time he went to like attack anything mm-hmm. yeah. uh it was crazy as heck uh, yeah, yeah it was, uh, that was a pretty out. fun battle. We kind of yeah. kicked their ass, right? Jinx cast slow, and, yeah. and all the all the creatures got slowed down. Well, um, yeah, this is the rooms I yeah. like a lot because they use the environment. Because the first thing to do as mm-hmm. soon as you enter the room is that they all throw oil balls onto the ground, so those will light up if you guys do any fire spells or once the hell wasp come out. So that's great for that. Yeah. Um, one thing I took out of the fight, just because I was like, there's, there's enough shit going on, is that. In the, you'll see on the map, there's like three runes that take up the first part of the, of the thing. Mm-hmm. Those are all like paralysis runes, where like if you get hit, yeah. it's like one d seven plus. Like, I, it's it's a it's some huge amount where I was like, I think like the average you're gonna get is probably like six rounds or like nine rounds of being mm-hmm. out on the high ends. Some crazy amount where it's like, oh, you're out of the fight for most of this, um, unless yeah. somebody just gets you healed up. So if like Mother Varen, who I think could probably, I think Mother Varen can stop paralysis or like cure it. So Mother Varen, if you got fucked by that and couldn't get out of it, let's like, like there's no, there's no saving you. I don't think at that point. Um, the rooms are nearly really invisible <laughs> and require successful DC 24 yes. find trap check. Yeah. To, yeah. to discern each. Also, oh my I'm goodness. Going to, I'd like to re-emphasize one part of this. The runes are 10 foot by 20 foot and are placed side by side in such a way that the first 20 feet of the room's floor are com- covered completely. Yeah. <laughs> like, so this, this, this is, there's an element in how this was written of... <laughs> No, your guy can't hit my guy because my guy has a super magic force field and Yeah, 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 yeah totally. That's it. Yeah. That's it's it. real small dick GMing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is what <laughs> is well, like I have a laser gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The laser gun which refracts which goes through your force field. It's like, no uh because it's the force field works in such a way that it cancels out the rate of the laser. Yeah. yeah. By the way, the paralysis <laughs> lasts one D eight plus nine rounds yes that's what it was yeah so at least 10 rounds a successful a successful dc 26 will save negates no lawful creatures suffer a minor minus two penalty on the save. of course yeah (laughs) yeah the (laughs) pregens yeah um yeah yeah it's just really like guy what was the like i get that this is a level seven funnel and like we haven't really addressed that this effectively is meant to be run like (laughs) yeah a funnel, but like with character swap outs rather than yeah. you've got three characters, you've got two characters, you've got one character. Maybe if you actually did run it like a funnel, 
<laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. There might be something to it. Where it's like, yeah, we just <laughs> gank them. But our main problem is how fucking small the rooms are. Mm -hmm. This is wild. Yeah. I'm sorry to just keep reading this description. No, no, but guys. This is, this is disarming like... <laughs> the rooms without triggering them requires successfully casting Dispel Magic, specifically targeted upon an individual room with a spell check result of 22 plus. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's why that, that's why luck. there's like that's why there's like a lot of GM buffering because so many of these rooms are this level of complexity where like even me doing prep ahead of time I'm like trying to run a game and also remember all these no. different things is just like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but also there's so many things like, that are ugh. exceptions to how <laughs> things work otherwise than DCC. Yeah. Um, yes. Like everything's like, an exception. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's 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 really fucking accurate. Everything's got a fucking exception. And I and I yeah. do think in this case with how crazy this is, the DCC outline, the format that they do adventures in, actually mm -hmm. harms it in this case. Yep. This totally. could have really used an old school essentials or world's not number kind of thing where it's bullet points, bullet points, bullet points, bullet points. Yeah. Not yeah. big yeah. paragraphs, which makes it hard to find information, I, and then stat blocks between big paragraphs and you know like yeah. across multiple I pages. Would really, uh... I, I would really like to see Goodman Games like update the DCC layout. Yeah, I agree. In I, general, I, I don't. I don't think it's good for DCC games either. No, I totally agree. I think it's, yeah. and, like whatever. I, no, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think at lower level, it's fine. It's just one of those things where it's like you see the problems a lot more when you're trying when to find complex. information across four pages <laughs> for one room. Yeah, for, for the for the for other people's context, uh, area one five, the scrying room is. So this is two column layout and it takes genuinely a page and a half. Mm -hmm. A page and a half in two column layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, did you get, it, did, it's not great. Did you guys all back this? John, Martin, and yeah, Alex, you all backed it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get physical books? Yep. I did. 102. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Yeah, well, that's nice. Martin, one or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Martin's just like, yeah, Martin, you should have had all of your copies display right behind you. I should have done. <laughs> yeah. like an arc. Wait, how many? How many? A point arch over your head. Yeah, there was a five copy bundle. Each of them had different cover art. So. <laughs> oh, so you're opening up a uh, RPG bookstore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am now. <laughs> you got the merchant bundle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those things, and you think to yourself, is this going to be a future classic? Am I going to really kick myself for not having each of the five covers? And then soon into it, I was like, fuck, yeah, I should have just gone for the standard one. <laughs> <laughs> Martin's got, got enough copies that he can tear sorry. them in half as he plays yeah. them and, and still have and continue the game. Oh, yeah, that, that would have been a great bit. <laughs> just at one point, you guys die, he just like cracks Where one over his, over his knee. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait, Martin, are you playing the, the game with the book open? And Martin's like, shut up. Yeah, I still <laughs> lost. Yeah, I'm not helping. <laughs> it's still impossible. Um, <laughs> right seriously and on top of all that stuff the main thing that's in here is that crystal ball with one of the shards of the sword um which Ooh, also has a trap attached to it um because there's a tapestry in the back that has two basically two laser javelins i'll shoot out and it will it'll pierce through everything in a straight line so if all four of you were like just like in the doorway <laughs> and that it would just go through all of you guys I, on top of that so there's one cool. thing about like and again I know we're harping on like a broken record on this, but like the exceptions design, which is like the worst kind of design you can ever do. Um, I'm going to read the description of the crystal ball. The crystal ball is also trapped with a rune, runic alphabet demonic, Cloudo, which is obscured from the perceptions of detect magic by the contents of the crystal ball above. <laughs> yeah. Even if they've got detect magic, it doesn't work for this trap. Which this trap I ignored. Doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. No, you did. <laughs> Cause I was like, cause that's bullshit. I'll be like, I'll be honest. I probably wouldn't have ignored it if Steve didn't get fucked at every goddamn moment. The amount of times <laughs> where I was like, "Listen, man, you're level some cleric. Uh, your character would know that like vampires aren't affected by charm or paralysis spells when he used them." So I was like, "You could just try this again," or he'd be like, "I'm gonna try this one." I'm like, "They have immunity to that." And, like it it happened like four or five times, and when that wasn't happening, Steve was rolling natural ones. And, like, having to destroy his own supplies, which I thought yeah. was very cool roleplay of you destroying the supplies you had that yeah. had monetary value to get your disapproval back down. Alex, I am, um, at the end of my prayer, I uh, take two items out of my pack. I take out my potion of strength, and I hold the vial up, and I say, with you, 
just to say, I need no other strength, and smash it into the ground. And then I pull out my scroll of remove curse, and I say, as long as I follow you, I am always blessed, never cursed. And then I set fire to the scroll. Um, but Steve's character was just like, I think by the end of this, you would have become like an evil character of just like, Justicia fucking <laughs> sucks. You know what? <laughs> You've left me <laughs> with nothing. <laughs> At two points within the first session, Steve's patron put down her hand and was like, hey, hey, buddy, you need to stop <laughs> in general. <laughs> um, so the first time Steve had Mother Baron uh, destroy the goods, and then the next one, it's like, oh no, you've got to like get me a follower in this dungeon. It's like, in this dungeon, um, boss, boss. Everyone else in the party either worships you or has their own patron, and everyone that lives in this dungeon isn't alive. This is a hell dungeon, <laughs> <laughs> and that's like within the first session. That was um, a fun running bit, though. Of just it was Steve yeah. constantly like, hey, so uh, looking to convert yet? <laughs> like, uh, I gave you some good healing. Uh... <laughs> Maybe Justicia could possibly, yeah. you know, give you more help in the rest. Of, you know, I've seen your god uh, fr literally frown on you for trying to heal me, right? <laughs> I almost, uh, I almost turned Jinx. Like Jinx was getting like, close. Getting close. Yeah. Getting close. <laughs> She's a hard style, but she will sell. Yeah. I mean, once I lost the dreaming, I was probably all in. Yeah, I think you were all in. <laughs> well, yeah, I think once I think you lost, lost the dreaming, you were all in because you also did anymore. something else that was like, I need God now because there ain't nothing <laughs> yeah. left. <laughs> oh, boy. Ugh. Martin, did you have a paper? Uh, Yes, yeah, mine was the three fates. Right, right. Where I didn't help much. Pretty I, cool, but they didn't really do anything. No. Yeah, I mean, but they're clearly <laughs> all right with polyamory, so, I mean, you could have probably taken on Justicia as well. Yeah. They're like, we're sisters, you sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the gods are weird. You know, you, you know, like, the Greek yeah, pantheon has weird. never stopped any of them. <laughs> right. Yeah, anything else in that room, guys? Anything else you wanted to bring up? Because other than, like, the, yeah, there's the the hell hornets and that sort of thing but uh, I, think, I think i, I would it's say probably the that, most fun room <laughs> well i i was just gonna say it was probably the yeah. most fun room because we were the most successful in the entire dungeon in that room <laughs> yes like we, we we took the dungeon we took that room on and we beat the room and we got the sword piece and we were like yeah we feel pretty yeah. good about ourselves right we about now and that was a mistake, wasn't it? Because I yeah. think that, that gave us confidence, which we had no right to have uh, later on. <laughs> well, one of the coolest things about Room 4, by the way, was, just real quick, um, is that if your character gets downed by the by the hell wasps, they become the new husk golem. Yeah. yeah I really like room that. Room 5, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, the hell wasps. Yeah, yeah they, uh, they, they go inside your body and then, yeah, um, yep. pilot you like a meat mech. But yeah, so when you guys had originally gone to room two, the room that was spinning that Steve saved me from, um, mm -hmm. you guys then went up to room six instead of room five. So, but after you guys fucked up there, you guys left and then came back. So now we'll go to room six where like, this is a, this is probably my least favorite room that we had to run of the, mm -hmm. of the whole thing. Number two probably yeah. would have been my least favorite room, but I think this one took the, took the cake because of that. So yeah, if you guys want to talk about room six, which is the one with the, the wall and the light. Wall. The, yeah. Yeah. I'm going so, to ask a question first, though, yeah. if if that's okay. Um, what which bit did you get wrong about it? Because I'm kind of confused as to. So I'll let I'll let John describe the room first, and then I'll explain yeah, yeah, what I yeah. got wrong describing yeah. to you guys. Because I I fucked I the yeah well I'll I'll, I'll describe it first so people have context, and then I'll explain what I <laughs> yeah. got wrong. So we we've entered here right after like the fuckery of room one, in the same session as the fuckery of room one and two. It is a large square room and. As you enter, there is a light kind of floating on from the ceiling, uh, a ways into the room. And then about 10, 15 feet in front of you is a 10 foot high wall that's just like stones stacked on each other. And against the wall is a ladder, a knotted rope with a grappling hook and steel pythons. And being a dwarf in this scenario, I was like, hey, Alex, do I smell any gold or jewels in this gems in this room? In DCC rules, a, go a, a dwarf can smell a piece of gold the size of a coin in a 40 by 40 room. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, you know, 
and he was like, well, yeah, so you know, you climb up there and you can kind of smell a gem down on the floor. And I'm like, well, but I don't see one. He's like, yeah, you don't. And then through some experimentation, we found out the floor is an illusion. <laughs> yeah. Steve had managed to figure out that there was... <clears throat> now, part of it was that the wall of the spell magic, this was, I think, part, part that you messed up where we, we knew about it. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to know about it. It shouldn't be detected. Uh... Um, yeah, which I, <clears throat> which I didn't catch. Well, yeah. How are you supposed to? There's so much fucking shit to keep track of in this room. Yeah. So, we lowered me down the side of the of the thing using the rope that was there that happened to be long enough for me to reach the actual floor. Mm -hmm. As I went under the illusory floor, I learned that everything was there, and also that silence had been cast because I had been like humming a little dwarven mining song as I was going, and um, all of a sudden I couldn't hear myself humming. <laughs> it's around that point that the old Duke boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so basically what we had twigged is that the rope was actually a rope dance rope so it's a trap i tug on the rope to try and signal something's wrong and then the rope tries to escape and fall down behind me yeah like unfortunately steve yeah like steve had like was like no i'm gonna hold on to this rope just in case something mm -hmm. weird happens and thank goodness because of what happens next um <laughs> <laughs> Alex didn't describe what was attacking me or how this was happening. He was like, "Oh, would you make a make a dexterity uh, make a reflex save?" Okay, cool. Make another reflex save. Okay, cool. Make another reflex save. <laughs> uh, okay, make another reflex save. Okay, that one gets you. Um, you take a shit and he of damage. Said, yeah, I lost over half my health from like one round down there, yeah. and that was without being. With mostly being not being engulfed. Mm -hmm. Also, I should point out that I was wearing some of the heaviest mail in the game. So I had like a minus seven to my reflex yeah. saves, which was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> we They pulled me out and I was clean in ways that I had never been clean because layers had been stripped from all of my surfaces. So, you know, we, we left after that. We didn't want to go back. <laughs> we went back <laughs> because... Well, Alex told us to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you only had one way to go. You didn't want to go into the room four, so oh, you had one other yeah. way to go. And well, actually, you that, told was, us that, that was why we went back. Cause because we, Alex told us, like, oh, look, yeah. guys, I got something wrong. And we were like, okay, it can't mm. be that bullshit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we get back. back there, and there's two <laughs> ebon cubes climbing the wall up mm. towards us, and we're yeah. like, oh, I see. <laughs> Which I did um, as a mercy so that we don't have to keep dealing with the silence and darkness. I was like, maybe they're yeah, just going to yeah. go after these guys and then they're just going to wait there until you guys get back. Yeah, basically their food got away and they pursued. Yeah. Um, so what Jinx was going to suggest, if the cubes had stayed in there and it was still a bit of a mystery, was that we actually push the wall over, demolish the wall, and then just start filling this pit with something or other to drive whatever it is in there out. So, I don't know, maybe burning oil mm -hmm. or, or something. Yeah. Probably would have been a, a pretty good plan, yeah. honestly. <laughs> mm. but, Except uh, for the part where we did have to cross that room. Also, the yeah. entire time we were there, there was a secret door right next to us. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we found the right exit tunnel uh, yeah. in the next uh, hallway we found. <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. I feel the room now. Like, I want to check for secret doors. <laughs> but, okay, so just to, just to give it from the GM perspective, basically what's in there, you have this room um, that has this crystal that casts darkness and silence, and it's on the bottom. Also on the bottom are two giant ebon cubes, like uh, you mentioned, that have six action dice each and uh, like 150 hit points and a bunch of other shit going on. Um, they're slow as fuck, but they're very dangerous. There's also a room of basically like dispel magic, or so there's like a thing of dispel magic, but it goes off, I think, after magic is cast through it. Or like at some point it's supposed to pulse and that's gone and then you guys can okay. cast magic. It's not super clear. Um, that's why yeah, I was it's confused. really not. <laughs> Um, so the thing is too, is that you guys also aren't supposed to detect it. So you guys would have been like casting spells and they just wouldn't have been working. They would have gone through and then just stopped, which would have given you guys the hint. But yeah, but essentially what you guys end up doing was you guys could figure it out. Don, John got fucked up. You guys left. You came back. The Ebon Cubes were on the wall. They guys are supposed to climb. So you guys, uh, I think Steve, Steve, were you the one who knocked down the walls to basically knock them back down? I think we, we did it as a group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't just <laughs> me, but, um, I think at, at least three of us. Yeah, had the same idea to be like, oh, we should, because the cubes were on the on the wall themselves. The cubes could climb, so they yeah. were literally on the other side of the wall. So we just started pushing the wall over. Yeah, 
to see if it would Wind collapse. Cast, uh, shatter on it, I think. Yeah, yeah. You guys were like knocking out, and like one fell over the the wrong way onto the platform with mm. you guys, and their one went the other way. Um, so basically, the reason why I did that stuff was because at, at that point I was pretty fucking done with that room, and I was like, <laughs> all right, I think I think. I'm getting more frustrated than the players are with this fucking thing. So put the two open cubes there. That's the only real danger. That's gone. And then there's the actual crystal, which, by the way, is like close to impossible destroying if you don't know what to do. Um, yeah. And it's not clear at all what you're supposed to do with it or see it even because um, it just has a giant sphere of darkness and silence around it. But yeah, so... <laughs> And like Dan said, once you guys left the room, he checked for secret doors and found out there's a secret door that just bypasses the entire thing. Um, though it does have a trap in it. <laughs> also, I I would like to read to the read out the description of the anti magic wall because it is such horseshit. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the anti magic wall, as indicated on map number one and map number four, the cross section map, map number four, the cross section map of the area, an invisible wall of anti magic has been stretched has been placed on the eastern side of the room. The wall stretches from the north to south wall. It starts at the ceiling and extends 20 feet towards the floor. It is situated 5 feet from the 1 foot thick wall that separates the room. Its placement is such to foil a wizard attempting to cross the room magically. When touched, it releases a pulse of anti-magic through the entire room, dispelling all ongoing effects, including those normally only suppressed by dispel magic. Note that, as this is anti-magic, not a mere dispel magic effect, it cannot be found via detect magic or wizard sense. Once activated, the wall vanishes. Yeah. But what's the point? <laughs> Just basically, there, if, if Jinx tried doing, doing a fly spell and jumping through, I guess, it would have dropped you right down into the cubes, and yeah. then it would have been gone, and then mm -hmm. you guys could do the rest of it. But with the everything else we... there, the illusionary, the illusionary floor, the darkness <clears throat> and silence, the ebon cubes, the illusion of if you go down there, it shows you on the other end of the room escaping, um, and then the wall also crumbling, the rope the light that has nothing to do with anything there's just mm -hmm. so much in this one room that i was like fuck mm -hmm. me <laughs> like <laughs> the, the way that we interacted with that room um we would have never known there was an anti-magic wall also I, I i'm just noticing this now also, we, wait, wait, wait. we treated that wall like it was 10 feet that wall is 40 feet high no no steve this 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 are you looking at um the map on page 25 yeah, the cross section. That that's side. That's a cross section. Yeah, it's yeah. side on. Yeah, and yeah, the, but the wall you guys climb is, is really feet. fucking high. Yeah, that's yeah. that wall is forty feet high. And then, and then and then and then twenty feet below it. Yeah, so, so I, I think uh, I did describe that because right. I was aware of that. I might have, I might have done it improperly. Uh, well, but yeah, that's no, fine. Like it was just more of that. We missed something. That was all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, but like, oh, that was interesting. The, the reason yeah. I I call out the description of the anti magic wall is because. Well, one, they refer to it as a dispel magic wall for most of the ma of the book, except for that description there. Um, <laughs> seriously, if you actually look at the book, it usually refers to it as a, a wall of dispel magic. <laughs> the description of everything in feet from feet from something else. Yeah. It's like this wall, instead of saying yeah. this wall is blank by blank, it's doesn't matter how thick it is. It's located here. Instead of being like, it's here to here. And it's like this from this other object. And it's just like. <laughs> yeah it's poorly described agreed like get a tech writer okay yeah. <laughs> we are gonna Fire get so somebody. much fucking hate yeah. for this this is gonna be amazing <laughs> <laughs> fuck you goodman games <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're calling you out john goodman <laughs> why don't you just go play uh, world's uh, own number did... you fucking hack <laughs> if you hate dcc so much we're, we're just like, like to... we're calling you out john goodman even though we know you didn't write this yeah. <laughs> yeah. Disclaimer: I do love DCC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they didn't. They the didn't write this to be loved, did they? This this no, was not no, a module. Was, no, but, 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 but no, bitching no. about this is part of like the fun yes. of a, of a funnel yeah. or a, of an adventure yeah. like this. Is that like nobody enjoys Tomb of Horrors? Like it's it's a bad right? it's a bad adventure. <laughs> like it's not a good one. It was designed out of spite. Like yeah. you know, so and like yeah. so is this one. It's it's meant to just be mean. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, fuck that room. It was confusing, <laughs> and I fucked it up. Um, but also, I forgive myself. Um, but also, the next room is like the coolest room in the whole dungeon so far. So I mean, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts on that room? I really wish we had. 
I really yeah. wish myself or Dan had looked for secret doors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. other real pain in the ass thing about that room was that it, it, it was set up like a perfect puzzle room, and there was this crystal in the top that was lit, and I was convinced that there was something well, that it was we had. Crystal, to... Martin. <laughs> it was just a ball of light. Just a ball, just ball, ball of light. light. But yeah. still, but still, it, it, it's supposed to draw yeah. attention to it. It's absolutely yeah, like a. It, it did. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Was really I thought annoying, it was just a light bulb. Which I makes... honestly didn't think it was anything. No, I mean, uh, that's <laughs> I, I get where Martin's coming from, though, because there's a whole thing of darkness below that you guys found out, so maybe there's a thing of, like, oh, here's the light, yeah. here's the darkness, maybe there's, like, uh, some sort of thing there. I totally yeah, get maybe. That, that connection. Yeah. Maybe there was some way to bridge the two and dispel yeah. the darkness. Yeah. yeah. No, there like isn't. Maybe that... There isn't. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There's only one way to dispel <laughs> that darkness, and you have to know what it is going in there, and there's nowhere yeah. in the dungeon that you'll know. Um, How do you dispel uh, it? You have to ca you have to cast sanctify oh, and get right. twenty six or above. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can also um, there's another way you can do it. You could hit it with a holy smite, and that that uh, takes its well, protections away. Okay. Yeah, that means you can actually break it. Yeah. But... <laughs> it's also really heavy. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. It has an AC of 20, 30 hit points. Yeah. <laughs> But it's immune to damage. So, so funny when objects have hit points. I saw that that crystal ball that the piece of the sword was hidden in yeah. had like, it was like AC 13, yeah. it's, it's six hit points. And it's like, wow. Yeah, no, like, I, why I, does I it have an AC. Whatever I know you shit didn't like that. Do that. Like, you, you, yeah, you crack it open. You're you're able to you break, break it. it. There's no there's no danger. You crack it open, and there you go. We're not doing. I can make you <laughs> roll. <laughs> well, yeah, it's written for a different style of play to what we normally do. So yeah, you know, there's yeah. that as well. But yeah. also, like, yeah, absolutely. some of the layout is just bad. Like, mm. <laughs> I, I'm I'm absolutely. talking from like wearing my GM hat for a minute. I'm like. This is some of the worst presented RPG information I've seen in a long time. For some of the most complex stuff I've ever had to deal with. This is this yeah, this was, was a fun yeah, challenge. I, I didn't realize it'd be a challenge in other ways too, you know. Um, it, it almost it screams that as a GM you have to rewrite it as you prep yeah. it. Like you don't mm -hmm. just sit there with it in front of you and go, "Okay, here's what I need to know." You actually have to sit down and go, "Okay, let me make bullet points on my own page of all the things yeah. that I need to understand." In order this to is what it. I'm going to take out right off the bat. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you should. Do. I don't think you should have to like tear a module apart to prepare to run it. Mm -hmm. You know, Definitely like it, it's for a GM to sit down and, and go through it and go, okay, I understand what's going on in this scene. It it should just be right there on the page. You mm -hmm. can make yeah. notes, maybe highlight a thing or two, but this required so much more than a handful of notes and some highlights. This yeah. required you to literally rewrite it yourself yeah with the pertinent information because there's a ton of information in this and it's like like the last room it's it's more than a page and a half of information and all of it is pertinent yeah like there's no like yeah. there's no like there's there's barely any flowery wording here it's just a ton of information raw mechanics yeah, well, yeah. And, and the thing yeah. is too with it's anything like, that's yeah. big like a golem or a lich or that sort of vampire i have to flip to the bestiary book because there's they, there's an extra amount where they say they have like golem abilities which is a whole thing of golem abilities mm. that like mm. on top of the stat block that's in here like so that sort of stuff i have to go and like look at other places so i actually have like another half or full page of extra stuff to look at too to make sure i'm playing them right <laughs> which i did wrong later on but i honestly have told you okay with it because everything else sucked. the layout well i just noticed a little, like the lay again yeah the layout's terrible yeah but like the layout i noticed even like for room seven the room we're about to get into like they there's two descriptions yeah one for the just tournament totally unnecessary it really it really i looked through the tournament one and the other one i was like this really is unnecessary i don't think you need two here you don't need mm. to add this much like it doesn't change all that much i can't imagine i didn't read both but like yeah. i can't imagine what it could possibly change that you really need like two full like it's almost like a two page it's like it's a long room description too yeah. it's like yeah. several pages it is it's, it's yeah. crazy <laughs> It's a, it's it's a huge not amount. Extensive. Um, <laughs> like, which, who's editing this? Which I will say makes me feel better that you guys agree with me on this because there is a thing where like this isn't. I'm very much more of an improv GM with stuff where I just will go and riff off of things, mm. and I'm not the best at traps or puzzles because I find in this medium it can be really, really frustrating and difficult to explain to players what you see in your head or what's on the page to them in a way that doesn't make yeah. them go like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> and so the fact that it's not just me when you guys are reading through these pages that have a similar feeling makes me feel better that i wasn't like just totally fucking everything up <laughs> no totally not no it's poorly described and yeah. poorly put together yeah I, I would say like <clears throat> some of the descriptions there's so much that it's hard to know what's actually relevant mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah. And like, I get like vibes being important in terms of the descriptions and all that. Because, you know, I mean, look, it's a fucking RPG. I get mm -hmm. it. But also, I shouldn't have to read your amateur <laughs> fiction composition. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Going in for the kill. Oh man, not, John, not saying, John is. I, I, that, that's not this scenario. This, this yeah. one's mostly fine, to be honest. But like sometimes, you know, yeah. like dudes, I've played scenarios where there's like a 20 minute long fucking monologue at the start. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, and you edited down to this? Yeah. Okay, well, you don't need this at all. This is bad. Why did you add this? You I get never... flashbacks to me and Steve playing Zweihander and ring through the <laughs> rules and trying to find rules between all the flowery language. It's just like, oh my god, dude. Oh. I get you yeah. I get you loved Warhammer as a kid, but like... <laughs> <laughs> I get that the Warhammer fantasy RPG wasn't Warhammer enough for you. Yeah, but... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um... But I will say that I really like this room. However, one thing that I will say mm -hmm. is they describe the size of room seven. Yeah. As being 1,000 feet by 1,000 feet, 100 feet high. Yeah. I'm like, can the human eye even see 1,000 feet? Yeah, that was the thing where like, yeah. I had you guys just move your tokens around so you guys could see the entirety of the room because you're supposed to be able to see all of it, even though your tokens only have like the vision or whatever that you yeah. that I gave you. Um, yeah, no, it's a it's a gigantic room. It's a very cool room. So yeah, I'll let I'll let you guys describe it because um, I I did like this room quite a bit uh, in terms of flavor. Yeah. yeah, it was like a big monster party. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's all sorts of weirdos being weird in there. And, yeah. Uh, also all sorts of people running around, uh, <laughs> telling fortunes with their tongues and uh, yeah. <laughs> craziness. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of, like, so it's called the, the Hall of 1000 Portals, but the map only has like 32. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> this, yeah. this is a room where having a map actually was a detriment. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah. As, a, as a player with a token on the map, I was like trying to get a grasp of how big the room is. And I could move around yeah. the room and there were boundaries. But it's almost like, no, 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 th this shouldn't have been there. This should have just been you at the door. And then the, the DM goes in, okay, guys, this is yeah. going to be theater of the mind for the rest of this next room. Here's what you see. And then yeah. just see that. Because like the fact that I could see like a, a an 80 by 80 foot room on the map. Plus the doors it, don't even go all the way the whole up. Whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the on the west side of the room, the doors don't go yeah. all the way to the it's top. Like, so really? Yeah. You could have put three more doors in there. And why are they all different <laughs> sizes? You couldn't. Have, what is going on? <laughs> That's the true madness. It's the doors. <laughs> the doors different sizes. There's one in the corner that's like all like choke up. Like what is happening? That? <laughs> somebody did a first sketch of the map and just did it quickly, didn't they? With like a beer mat. <laughs> Or it. something, and then just well, thought, oh fuck it, that was it. You see the you see the double doors that as it enters the room, right? Do you ever start yeah. writing your name on something with a very definitive end, and suddenly you start getting close to it, and you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm running out of space. So you start to, exactly. to squeeze your letters <laughs> in. Exactly. It well, it started there and went down, and it was like, oh no, I can't. That's amazing. I got the four door. doors on each yeah. side of these. Like <laughs> that's an amazing analogy, Steve. <laughs> just that's like what happened? Fuck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. Well, yeah, it's sure about, like you walk into a room and there are doors as farther than you can see yeah. there shouldn't yeah, be any yeah. dimensions to it like yeah, you know what i mean 100%. yeah because it made it seem like there was a correct door to choose and like now i yeah. i see now that like whatever all doors led to the same place yeah, yeah. that's what that was that's that's what i was saying <laughs> yeah well, um, that was one of the things I noticed right away when Alex shared the map with us, and I looked over and I said, "All doors teleport to Area Eight. and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you guys yeah. didn't get the shard in Area Five, and then you get sent oh. back to air Room Two. Oh, um, okay. Oh. Yeah. Because oh, you need you need the shards to to get to the end. Yeah, That's why you guys the back four was fine. Because it was like, oh, there's nothing there you guys actually need. So viewer, this is not a Metroidvania. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No backtracking here. Yeah, um, I did enjoy that room just because I think that's the only was cool. RP really that yeah, I did that the had. entire time, which was also just me yeah. basically t like not being helpful at all, which is very very fun, of course. Uh, but like re reading of some of these whispered prophecies, you're kind of like find and destroy the dragon's heart. The only way for Chalixia to depart. I'm like, but the dragon's heart doesn't. What? And then it's like, <laughs> Chilichia's Bane is true death. A true statement. Note that Bane is capitalized. I'm like, motherfucker, how do you want me to pick that, pick that up on hearing it read? Do you want me to be like, <laughs> Chilichia's Bane is true death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's a fun one. I, I do like the Chilichia's Bane is true death because Bane is the actual, or 
name yeah, True Death is the actual name, but you know it as Bane yeah. or vice versa or whatever. Yeah. So it's just like it, yeah. it's it's very it's 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 well done. And and the and the clue is that they're both capitalized. I think yeah. Bane and and so you'd pick up maybe on that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, player, the players that's, that's that are going to read, read to you. <laughs> no, well, actually, you guys missed this because it was in one of the rooms. I think it was in the maybe in the Labractus room. You guys actually get that um, that handout like in in a, a, a scroll. Uh, like that that saying actually is a, like is a handout that you guys get. It uh, might it was in one of the rooms. Either you guys didn't find it or didn't look for it. I can't remember where it was. But... Oh, because I'm looking at the Whisper Prophecies table. Oh yeah, yeah. But like they 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 repeat that enough because like that yeah. vampire guy in the first room. He actually said I was supposed to say a line from that poem or from that thing every two rounds. I just forgot because I was dealing with so with many five creatures vampires. and all the things you guys are doing. Yep. Um, so yep. I forgot yep. to do that after the first line or, or second line. Um, yeah. <laughs> Classic. I'm the same way. Well, uh. Honestly, Dan, I was considering when he dies, having him just go like, and uh, uh, just like saying the whole thing and just, like, <laughs> just collapsing. But I was like, <laughs> I'm this body you yeah. find. Uh... Yeah, it, it just all comes out. <laughs> yeah, his guts oh, come out. Oh, on out. his stomach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. That's funny. Yeah, that's my style. Um, but yeah, Fuck, exposition. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. There is a par- there's a narrative here. Um, uh, yeah, each oracle, each person in the room is an oracle. Each one is chained to one of the thousand doors. There's a fucking huge <laughs> hourglass overhead whose only purpose seems to be to make you think that you have to make a decision faster yeah of course yeah because um, yeah. yeah. it makes you do a timer in real life of 30 minutes and then at the yeah. end i can't i can't remember what happens nothing i think nothing happens right so <laughs> something it does something where it's like it, it nothing bad actually happens with it or actually infinite instantly teleported out of the room as if they had chosen the door with a negative prophecy effect right right so it basically just railroads you anyway if you guys don't make a choice in time so that's yep. that's fine um, Damn it, guys! This this room is four solid pages. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and there's two descriptions of it. Yeah, depending on what style you're running it in, and they're honestly That's not that different, in my opinion. <laughs> but this, this also shows you um, what I was talking about. You'll see in the skill checks. There's wizardry. There's history, religion. Um, the mm-hmm. history and religion one being DC 15. Those, those are the ones that tipped me off. Where I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, There's not history and religion checks. And this is this. And there are <laughs> five in this system. Yeah. I, I get being like, I'd like to use my knowledge of history or yeah, my knowledge of religion. For sure. For sure. But like, then to set those checks so high is like. Yeah. But I should say, like, history bracket intelligence. You know, yeah. maybe like maybe religion uh, bracket uh, personality or intelligence because personality is the main cleric stat. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. What it should still be coming back to GCC Something. in some way, where at least wait, 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 where it's wait, wait, not wait, so fucking I, obvious. I, that's all. Alex, I'd like to read the religion DC yeah, fifteen go ahead. One to you. Religion DC fifteen on a successful DC twenty check. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a fucking minute okay this is what i'm fucking wait talking about this is what i was dealing with i'm trying to run this goddamn game <laughs> it's it constantly there good. there are there are creatures with different ac that golem that we're gonna get to in a second you. that golem had an ac of 19 in one stat block and 21 in the other so i went with 21 because i assume that's, that's what bullshit. they yeah or it's that's like, like fucking bullshit. that's a big that's difference cause... that's a 10 yeah. percent difference on a d20 like yeah <laughs> It's just confusing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's just massively fucking... Exactly. It's already hard enough to run this type of fucking yeah. game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's already one of those things where it's like, fine, if you're going to leave the 5 this e thing stuff was, in... Was crowdfund- least... This thing was crowdfunded. Yeah. Like, people paid fucking money so you could make this correctly. It also wasn't rushed out. Like, it came out, like, yeah. what, a no, year and a half? I know. Yeah. Or, like, longer since, like, since the Kickstarter yeah. went. So, like, I, I know they also did Dying Earth and they had other things, but, like, that's not really... Those, that, those have nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's not an excuse. Like, <laughs> those, so... that has, those things have nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Dying Earth took forever, too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, those are separate teams or whatever, you know? That's not an excuse. Yeah, yeah. whatever. No, for sure. But those are sort of things the, um... where I was just like, God damn, man. Like, I've already dealt with, like, as Steve said, four pages. And then there's also incorrect information in those four pages. And they're in giant paragraphs. So trying to find the information I'm looking for. Um... It's all just walls of text. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's just like. This... Like, one of the things that happened, though, is that, like, the PDF yeah, that was sent out was the proofreading copy. I know this because it's in the file name. And yeah. each and a lot of the pages end with proofreading copy yeah. in blue letters um but 
this stuff also made it into print. Yeah. And that's mm. not great. Yeah. They also had a whole stomp the typo uh, thing. I'm fairly sure for this one where they sent out a thing like, hey, like here's like where you can put all the notes and stuff. I'm I'm okay with some typos. Like, you know, like yeah. mistakes happen, that sort of thing. But there's enough wrong things in here where it feels like the wrong one went to the printer. Um, mm -hmm. And then by that time it was too late and they didn't say yeah. anything or, mm -hmm. and honestly, that's a better outcome than if they literally were like, this is good enough. It's all we got. We got to ship it out already where it's like, yeah. mm. you'd rather think it was a mistake that they cannot now afford to correct yeah. rather than like, they were just like, <laughs> eh, good yeah. enough. Which for but, one of your biggest like advertised know. modules that you're trying to release out there, if this is just fucking DCC number 173, whatever, it's 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 one thing. But like this is like a mm. big thing that you guys were making like a you know big point of. Yeah. Also, so to be also one of your like heralding back to like DCC's early days when they started being as as a 3.5 uh, creator mm. company, you know. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff there where it's like that. I've been looking at yeah. a lot of those old DCC modules because yeah. I've been like, oh, I want to see some of them are really cool. But again, like it's this light, like they haven't updated their layout since those days. Yeah, really. <laughs> and they need to like badly. Yeah, they really, really do. There's yeah. so many good examples nowadays of a lot of the really good layouts. OSC is the one I always go to, even though I'm not a huge fan of OSC as a system. Their layout is still, awesome. in my opinion, yeah. like some of the best around it's so easy to find yeah. stuff merc board kind of did a similar yeah. thing with their dungeons you know those sorts of where the the maps on every page and like yeah. the bullet points and things are very concise and you know you can riff off of things and whatever yeah um I, yeah this, this like another, wall of text thing is, is madness yeah is this another example of like the loose leaf book thing no <laughs> don't don't bring that up we, i can't layout. take two communities being mad in one video don't do it don't don't bring it up <laughs> no, but I'm, oh my god i'm using it i'm using it as a, as a no 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 I, it's fine is, Steve, that do what it. The, is that what the maybe that's the mentality it's like our customers are are the people who enjoy our content are used to this layout that this is the layout that they've all they've been we've been using for ages well i wouldn't say like harindex was different because that was an index not a mm. book yeah, like that was specifically meant to function differently to a book. Yeah, that was the entire point. Also, the only problem with that one was that they just didn't make it clear what the product was. Yeah, it, that it. was the entire issue, right? So I'm, like, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not specifically on, stated. I'm not, no, 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 what you're I'm saying. saying I'm, what I'm saying is, is like, is this why? It's how it's always been. Is this yes? Yeah. Like this is how we, this is, is our how our books are laid out. Why would we change? This is, if you got a house style, that's yeah. There's, I'm sure there's something that's, to be uh, in that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Martin, Martin just showed was that Tomb of Horrors, Martin, or another old school module. That's the that's the original. And that that is a big thing with DCC. Like, there's a there's a whole thing, uh, which honestly, this goes into a tangent. But I, I think they've removed it for a lot of them. But I don't know if they're still around. But they used to have a thing at the beginning of their modules. I was like, remember the good old days of like no NPCs, just getting the dungeon <laughs> at the last level. Like with stuff like Lightmar and Dying Earth, and also all these things have added more social stuff and everything else. That sort of thing doesn't really doesn't work apply. anymore for a lot yeah. of even if it's just for the dcc mainline stuff in the mainline stuff there's so many different ones out there that aren't just a dungeon and honestly some of their best ones are the ones that yeah. aren't just dungeons but that's also a taste thing i don't want to i will say steve i don't want to i don't know um i don't want to psychoanalyze Goodman games too much on how they're doing things and why they're doing stuff because i feel like that gets into, into the area of us talking about stuff that we don't just necessarily know yeah yeah it's yeah. wild speculation and i don't, I don't want to get into that stuff too much but i do I think you're on to something there which is like no, oh, this is how we do things and that's how it's always worked mm -hmm. and i do think for the most part it does work for the smaller yeah. modules but when you get this stuff it just doesn't but um i have yeah, said in past videos i do think they should update their their outline before though so it's not just a you thing noticing this steve i that is something i've said where i'm like ah for actually running these this is getting a little bit like outdated compared to what we can do nowadays you know but you yeah. don't have to pack as much information to page as you can <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's quite a few RPG companies that have a similar thing going on. I honestly I think Free League has that kind of going on where I love Free League. I love the alien mm. books and all that. They're awful to run. They're terrible. I yeah. mean their lay their layout's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I will say in my in my opinion, in my no, experience running them, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've uh, done the vision and scenarios. And they call haven't him been... hate, layout hater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like once you you play like uh, you know M Merkborg and, and OSC and shit, yeah. and like you see how it can be done and how yeah. it can just yeah. it eases so much for for the GM to to not have to flipping around. Man, I can't. Yeah. My brain doesn't work like that. Like I start flipping around and then I'm just like lost. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like Ugh. no, that's totally fair. Yeah. Which is where I was with this, where I'm like, I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so I like skip stuff by accident or can't find it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. <laughs>
So, who, who else um, do we hate? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All the stuff comes from like love, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love Goodman Games, yeah. and I love DCC, yeah, I love absolutely. Free League and Alien and, and all that stuff. Uh, it's so, just that yeah. I've read enough Goodman Games things to get kind of frustrated with this layout. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. I wouldn't be so damn angry if I didn't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll show you angry. You're so angry, Goodman Games. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you just how much you got to make me like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, enough, God damn it. <laughs> uh, I said, John we get to the next room. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. One that room was yeah, awesome. Through any of the doors, and congratulations, you're in a sewer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, once you go through any of the doors, you end up just getting teleported to the same place, no matter what, unless, like I said, you didn't get the crystal in room 15. Yep. And then you're just teleported to, yeah, was essentially just this really dingy hallway with a statue at the end. Now, I'm looking at this map now and like it looks to me like the this is just a straight corridor and there's a secret door that goes to this this oh perpendic- yeah you're right <laughs> here you're right. right well we so were tired of waiting we... on you to find them so we, just- <laughs> 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 so we shouldn't even have known that other door was there yeah. <laughs> oh god oh, now that module's turning us into monsters so <laughs> funny. what did you do alex <laughs> yeah we're fighting each other oh man that was a crazy so you're telling room. me the nan opening door to room nine should never have happened and maybe, That's what I'm saying. Uh, well, here's maybe what we'd still be suffering out this campaign today. Here's what I'll <laughs> say in my defense. Um, one thing you'll also notice is that the player maps also show you where the fucking traps are because you guys could yes. see the pressure plate. On the map, the yeah. PTT map has that X. That's like, yeah, like that. That's next to the, like that. That's that's a whole pit trap thing. That's built in. That's built in. Yeah, because they knew I was going to cast Detect Magic. The, the It's just helping the players yeah. by just showing the right yeah. where it is. Yeah. There it is. As yeah. soon as detect, ma- uh, detect Evil, sorry, exactly. was, was So it cast. shows you that. It shows you the oil that we're going to get to with the, with the Golem. And also, on the map itself, there wasn't like a secret room. It just showed a hallway, and I totally forgot that it was a secret room. Um, for That's the one so I had funny. you guys, so I just totally missed that because I was just I was just looking at the VTT. I wasn't looking at the book map. Um, oh right, 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 right. And so on the on the VTT, it just looks like a, a hallway that leads down to a door. It does. Um, That's funny. Yeah, it totally did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I honestly feel like if we go through this, I feel like Dan should be the one to. Yeah, to, yeah. to walk us through that. this, uh, yeah. this, this okay. one, okay. It, it will, will, will help out with certain stuff. But uh, I think yeah. I think you had the biggest hand in both good and bad ways in this room. <laughs> right. So, uh, well, okay. So we whatever we walk into the room. There's a pressure plate there. We're kind of trying to figure out what that does. Doesn't seem to do anything. But we go about like kind of pitting that. We took some pitons and like pinned the pressure plate down, and then we're able to like walk off it. I don't know if we actually. I, I think we approached the golem and yeah steve's it got right. up yeah it got up lit the hallway on fire jinx went down immediately mother varen was like pretty severely hurt um shit was going all wrong uh so rin cast the dreaming and got like a super high result yeah, on it rip. yeah that's right where uh she was able to you could actually turn back time it is fucking crazy. You could pay, you could like spell burn some like two extra points and like turn back time uh, to like up to 10 minutes earlier. Mm. So we decided that would probably be a better spot than we were at currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we did that <clears throat> while time was still frozen. Uh, <clears throat> Rin took the whatever the golem yeah, had. The crystal, I don't even remember uh, what it was. The crystal, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And we kind of took up positioning and let the it come to life and stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah, yep. I cast the dreaming like three more times and lost it mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I had like five turns or whatever yeah, it was think, or something. I think or, or it was, actually, I think it was worse than that because I think you cast it first and you guys got the extra actions, mm-hmm. and then you turn back time, which undid the dreaming that sort of stuff. And then when yes. you cast it again after, I think you fumbled it and lost it, so you didn't have yeah. it anymore. Yes. So you couldn't, you, um, like I recall it as last action of Dan's round, <laughs> dreaming. <laughs> what? Like, uh, where's that? What happens? Like, 
oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we happen. all relied on Dan for the dreaming. The, so. the dreaming was clutch. The dreaming came in came in handy so often. And I think with the dreaming, yeah, yeah, it was really like, it. oh, yeah. this is the end. Once would happen next, but yeah. So basically, what you guys are dealing with was like this flint golem that activates once you guys take the shard of true death out of its hand. Um, but with you doing the time thing where you took it out and then moved away, um, it then uh, got up, sets all the oil that you can see there on the ground. And like the first round does like, what, like 8d6? It does some crazy amount, maybe 12d6, some crazy amount of damage. And then every round after that, it burns off. And also fire heals this thing. So any damage you guys did at the beginning, it would basically just heal it all back anyway. Which doesn't make sense. It was crazy. It was made of flint. Yeah. Also, the illustration yeah. looked like Eddie from Iron Maiden. That's really yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> I was feeling like we didn't want to fight this thing, yeah. like just because of how quickly shit went off on our first like attempt yeah. at it. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, then, Tanda, what happens if you try and run? So I, I worked my way down to this door that we really shouldn't have seen anyway. But <laughs> yeah. was, oh, 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 oh that, that's, that's what's up, huh? That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I worked my way down there, and against my better judgment, I decided to open that door. And the the handout that accompanied like opening that door was the best ever. It was like nine like skeletal cult looking people all kind of turning their head toward the door, like, "Whoa, what are you doing here?" Yeah, glowing uh, red eyes, <laughs> and they're all holding daggers. Yeah, yeah. Cast war, shut the door. Cast ward, pour it on it. Turned it to a stone wall. That wasn't enough. Uh, there were shadows. They could just... Uh, they were shadows in the lich. And the lich had true sights where he could see through illusions and everything else. So he could see through anything and just get past stuff. So yeah, so you opened up the room. Well, you guys were still fighting the golem that was at like full health. That was beating your ass. Um, yeah, yeah, so you opened up to, I think, what? 20 shadows um, and a lich. Something oh crazy God. like that. Some crazy amount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and this is uh, where the death yeah. spiral began, basically, where it was just like, yeah. you turn back time and save the day and then immediately doomed everybody. And it was fantastic because it was pretty yeah. great. Um, yeah, you're welcome, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Rin died pretty fast with the shadows. Yes. Like, yeah. She was immediately surrounded and I think it took like one round and yeah. then that was it for her. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. So I think I think no matter what would have happened by, by that point, especially with Rin dead, just that extra action economy gone, a twenty five percent action economy mm -hmm. basically just taken off. Yeah. Um, the Lich and everything. I think they're dead anyway, but I did play the Lich a bit wrong because I was looking at their spells. And I was like, their spells are all cleric spells because this was a cleric that got turned. Um, and I decided I was like, none of these spells really make sense. He has like a death aura thing that he can use once per entire round, but basically just about his entire round. I thought I thought I was talking about action dice, I, I, so I misread it. So I basically just had him move and basically just do that ability over and over again because it's like a six uh, d eight or like eight d six. It's yeah, essentially it's like a necrotic fireball at that point, just on him uh, that just slowly kills you guys. <laughs> so slowly? I just had to sorry go. Yes. Like, <laughs> Some of us slowly, hit points. Slowly, slowly, quick, rapidly killed us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, rapidly. It was a few mm. rounds, that's true. Um, but I will say, I didn't add the two adamantine golems that also are supposed to join the fight that get activated in that room that will also uh, yeah. join, who have basically the same stats as the golem you're already fighting. So I think you guys no are way. fucked either way. In order, once that door was open, oh it was like, God. okay. I think, uh, <laughs> I think this is the end. Also, um, Alec, um, the, fire, <laughs> the fire the flint golem does is uh, 10d6 on the first round, yeah. 8d6 on the second round, 66 on the third round yeah. and so on and so on and also it, it's also adding smoke and other stuff to the room to make things harder yeah. to see so you're getting worse at hitting and other stuff <laughs> that mm -hmm. goes on the shadows just suck strength so they think you're on a zero you're permanently dead anyway also the room that the lich was in was a room of polarity where any spells cast in there reversed and they were all healed by cold i think so when you cast a fireball into that room martin um you yeah. actually end up healing them uh which is funny because you couldn't actually see in but you just heard a voice being like ah refreshing but i think that was that was pretty much that i don't know if there's anything else you guys want to add to that one any thoughts or uh any extra details we missed um i am very glad we didn't go into the room of inversion oh god it was a whole so, thing okay yeah well, what would happen oh. if i cast the dreaming in there we all lose fucking three yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> no seriously dan yeah that's great. In bad shit happens. Come minus three. Yeah. Or like oh, they wow. all get the dreaming cast on them, basically. That kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Laying on hands inflicts damage. Ooh. Spells that cast cause damage heal a like amount of damage. Yeah. Turn unholy. <laughs> Aimed at creatures are disrupted. Spells and abilities that are alignment based. 
function against the caster's alignment. So yeah. healing gets inverted. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think whoever wrote this hates clerics more than I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No one hates clerics more than my dice rolls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. Because <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, Steve, at one point, did you ask for God's help and then we're met with nothing? Well, yeah, d- divine intervention. I forget what it's called in DCC. Um, but yeah, I've been saving it for like a do or die moment. And I was like, all I wanted was for uh, the, the remaining living members of our group to not be in that room. Yeah. <laughs> just be uh, yeah. Just a couple rooms over. Not even 150 feet. Just a few rooms over. Could you just put us over there? Yeah. And I rolled, I want to say I rolled like a three. Yeah. You rolled um, super low. I was stupidly low. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, there's, there's, there's 10 automatic, um, yeah. disapproval, uh, and nothing to, to show for it. <laughs> yeah. I, that was, that was the moment I was like, I fucking hate this. <laughs> yeah. And you had like four luck at that point. Cause you'd burned so much. I had, I, no, I had zero luck. Oh yeah. Zero I had, luck. I, lost, yeah. I was yeah. at zero luck. I, yeah. I was, I was destined to fail all luck checks yeah. going forward. I burned uh, thousands and thousands of gold worth of items throughout the entire dungeon just to get my disapproval back. Uh, <laughs> I don't... Yeah. It was the worst run for me, yeah. I gotta say. <laughs> no, it was... I felt... I think of all the players, I felt the most bad for you because the spells mm-hmm. there too were actually like at least going off and doing crazy shit and like at least he could always rely... Uh, John Coe's relying on just ba- bashing things. That's all he had. Yeah. But like you kept getting fucked by everything. Every spell either didn't affect them or just yep. gave you or you just rolled a one or so low where it was just like it was just it was brutal to see just how well, mean the dice were being to you. Something that I noticed was um there there wasn't a, a huge reliance on debuffing spells, like spells that you would cast to sort of like weaken your enemy to fight. Mm-hmm. Um damaging spells were king yeah in this in the in the entire dungeon that we pl- uh can't mm. part of the dungeon that we played like if, if you had a damaging spell it just it hit and it yeah. did damage and they suffered for it yeah but i was like oh okay i'll try and paralyze this next monster and you're like no it doesn't work yeah i'm like okay <laughs> uh, i'll charm it no it doesn't work yeah uh can i stun it no you can't stun it yeah i'm gonna i mean i'm just gonna s- <laughs> I'm gonna cast blessing on our party and yeah. yeah. Oh, I rolled a two. Cool guys. That's yeah. Another devotion. Just approval, bitch. <laughs> roll the table. Uh. Yeah, roll the table. <laughs> <laughs> it was just yeah. Oh god, it was that. That was very, very unfortunate. Um. <laughs> that was mean. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm so sorry, Steve. We talked about it already, but like. The descriptions of the rooms and then the handouts. The handouts are super fucking cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Across the board. Um, they are universally pretty sick. Yeah. Um, the thing is <laughs> that uh, they don't all match no. to the description that you're given. Sometimes the um, the flint golem is supposed to look like the devil lich. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a dude. Sometimes it's... <laughs> Yeah, and the art just looks like a dude. Um, the room with the shadows looks like all these like cultists in red robes with skulls. All this will be appearing on yeah. screen for people to see. Um, and that sort of I, stuff where it's like Alex. Yeah, one that I really want to point out though in the um in the picture of the the of the flint golem though is that like that doesn't look like the the oil is the, that you're ankle deep in oil. Yeah. <laughs> Or that um, looks like, or that looks like the devil lich. Like it's supposed to be, you know. Yeah, all... it looks like a dude. Um, and also I think I think probably that stuff not that's forgivable forgivable because I think what you said earlier with the compass rose were like the handout should be like the is the main detail that the players are going to focus on about certain things. But I think mm-hmm. the the most egregious example of this is actually Steve's character mother Varen, um, because her the art floating shield that doesn't has a floating shield and like a flaming sword. Um, but Steve does not have a flowing shield. Also doesn't have a sword. Um, so the only thing that's really correct there is just the body armor and the woman underneath that body armor. The weapons are completely wrong in that. Which is just weird that there was that much, there was that much of a disparity between what the artists were given and what they were told to do, as and what the writers were supposed to do. Because once you go after the other, either the writers know what they're doing, then tell them this is what we want as described, or it should be, oh, here's what we got back from the artists for these descriptions that we gave them vague ideas. Let's just build off of that. Because you could easily, for the cultists, easily just make them be cultists that also just sucked, mm-hmm. like, strength. So I don't know if that's a, a mixture of issues from the original module, where there was some ideas of, like, oh, read the original module, do art for these rooms, and then there was, like, oh, we actually ended up changing these because of whatever reasons, you know? Well, like, Jinx is meant to have blue skin, right? From being... Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, another way, yeah, Jinx also have a third eye and blue skin yeah. from her corruptions, but does not look at all like that description. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no third eye for sure. Yeah, Rin and Egregious or Egregious look correct. Kinda, yeah, for the most part. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that was that was the extent. You guys, you guys died in that hallway. Um, you guys never, you guys got to the final room essentially, uh, of the first dungeon, which I'm actually impressed that you guys got that far. There's a lot of stuff. Hmm. That room four, I honestly was like, I think this will be a TPK just from the tactics. <laughs> Once Jinx is immediately killed, and then Rin probably also soon after with the lower ACs, <laughs> um, and just everything that goes wrong, I was like, I think it's just gonna be, you know. <laughs> just not great so i guess we'll just go into any sort of final thoughts uh from you guys anything anything else you guys want to add we've been ragging on pretty hard i do think as much as we've been ragging on i will say i did have a good time i had a fun time with yeah, no, I I had a time. my friends playing this that out. Yeah. and ragging um, on this is like i don't know ragging like on, a, on like a b movie kind of thing where it's like there's stuff yeah. i liked and there's stuff i didn't like yeah. and it, it was a fun experience overall i think the yeah. only thing about it from like as i said i think it does the type of dungeon it sets out to do quite well. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, a bunch of, like, small inconsistencies that you really shouldn't have had throughout the book. Mm -hmm. Like, as I said, religion check, DC 15. With the with the DC 20 religion check, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's kind of like, hmm. But there's a lot of those little things. Um, I don't mind it being written or being a different style of dungeon to what I would generally play. And I'm glad that I played it, because yeah. it is, as I said, there's cool shit in there. Like, especially the lower levels, right? Some of the lower levels of the dungeon have really fucking cool encounters. Yeah. They're they're also equally bullshit, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some more so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it being kind of bullshit is part of the attraction for... Yeah for this kind of dungeon and that's fine well that's also why i pitched yeah. you guys i said to you guys i was like listen i don't run yeah. these kinds of games you've all you've <laughs> all played in my games before this is not at all the kinds of games i run and also mm -hmm. i i would say in terms of like osr judges i am very much on the nice end as mm -hmm. as much as you can believe that like i'm i am much nicer i don't like killing my players i don't actually get that much satisfaction out of that i get much more satisfaction of hard challenges that you guys overcome and deal with and you know the camaraderie of playing a game together with my friends the whole reason why i play these games in the first place um mm -hmm. so this is just a fun sort of get out of my own like comfort zone and do it i think it was a really fun thing to do once in a while yeah definitely not what yeah. something i'd want to you know like no. uh you'd never get me to do like a do you want to keep trying this until we do it yeah <laughs> Not sure. um, but yeah, uh, Dan, yeah. You look at overall, uh, yeah, I had a had a blast playing it for sure. Um, yeah, I think for me, like, yeah, like we got a little nitpicky, uh, maybe with some of the stuff, but like, you know, with the layouts and and you know, at the end of the day, like, this is something that they crowdfunded and like people put up their money sight unseen because they like trust Goodman Games mm -hmm. and like the other products that they put out and and whatever I've backed uh, a couple Goodman Games Kickstarters mm -hmm. uh, so yeah all good but like it's kind of I feel like it should be held to a somewhat higher standard than something that they had just kind of updated and put out mm -hmm. there if you want to check this out go for it or whatever you know like they do those uh those like 5e updated those thick yeah. old school modules yeah. or whatever and i bought one of those and stuff and i i read there and i was like whatever this isn't for me like whatever but you know i didn't back that i didn't wait a year and a half for it yeah uh, you know and i think i don't know i think i i back a lot of kickstarter stuff and this is the sort of stuff i hate to see Mm -hmm. uh is like kind of what seems like laziness or just inattentiveness or you know just not caring about the finished product so yeah. kind of not great to see that from goodman games in my opinion uh, yeah. i don't like that no all. that's totally yeah. i think it's a totally valid valid view yeah. for sure but i had a blast with you guys for yeah. sure it was a lot of fun mm. yeah no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, martin still haven't read the books yet so i'm not going to comment on the quality of the the layout or the, the design because I, I i really don't know so i should probably read them and, and make make my mind up on that one <laughs> i did definitely have a fun time it was it was good fun um don't often get to play with high level characters so that mm. was a bit of extra bit of extra fun but I think the thing is, it, it, this 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 scenario really needs you to kind of put all of the good player lessons. So no meta gaming, no you know, searching every room with a ten foot pole in the bin, and and do the exact opposite. You you really need to go in there, sort of all guns blazing. And if there's a little clue you get from the VTT map, well, you need to use that, or you're going to die. And <laughs> yeah. It, so it, it kind of turns the whole thing on its head, and you you start need to be uh, 
you know, become a sort of bastard of a player to to actually I, win this. That's so, a very good point, Warren. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, other than that, it was was a fun time. I mean, I'm pissed that we didn't get to levels two and three only because it meant that we didn't play it for as long. So yeah, but yeah. Other than that, <laughs> well, don't worry, we have a lot of stuff in the future, Martin. We'll, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> and also, yeah, I'm no... just like hey, Alex. Yeah, this encounter seems familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I read it in a book once. Yeah, Tomb of the Demon Skeleton Lady. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> five werewolves in the first room in this cave. Um, <laughs> Why are there were so many werewolves here? Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> John, you've got your special silver sword. Also, in this setting, silver makes werewolves just horny. Yeah. What? Why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't do anything. Silver actually heals them. Uh, makes them stronger. <laughs> what about you, Steve? Any any other things you want to add? I uh, this is the th this kind of game makes me just reminds me that um, if you've got a group of good people, um, you can make any <laughs> you can make any crappy game fun. Um, <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm just being really brutal there. Yeah. Um, there, there, I just found that there was a lot of little things that um, I found uh, frustratingly confusing. Um, some of the descriptions of the characters, the uh, pregens that we used, were confusing to me, and I, I didn't like that. I mean, I, I'm not the same kind of players as as I think a lot of you guys. Um, I'm really focused on the rules, um, and I know that a lot of you guys don't. You actually like to play with your own rules or change things as you <laughs> like. So as a as that kind of player, and I and I'm looking at my character, and I'm like, this isn't making sense. Mm. Frustrates me, mm. and, and I try to go along with that. I, I'd be very curious to see what this game. Uh, this module looks like in 5e because I understand there's a it was made also with a 5e uh, version. So I'd I'd be curious to just to as a just to review that and to see what if they made the same mistakes that they made with this one. I would also not recommend this as a surprise on your players. No, like because no, it, it says it says that like if you're running this as a campaign and not That's a tournament. That's crazy. My head is like, oh, you're you're playing with these players and you've made it all the way to level seven and then your DM. <laughs> slides it out behind the character the dm screen and he's like <laughs> i'd yeah. like and us then, to do play a little game <laughs> yeah <laughs> like because yeah, I, I was i think i think if i ran it was sorry if i ran if i played in a campaign that you were running and we made it all the way to level seven in dcc of all things and then we walked into this dungeon and got murked in like the first two three rooms i'd be like what the fuck man <laughs> yeah no absolutely like, no i would this... i would never recommend this for a campaign with characters that you've built upon even with the lethal nature of osr and dcc type stuff where it's like oh your character could die at any point this yeah. goes beyond no, that yeah. by a, by yeah. a huge way beyond thing. Like, yeah. it's very open about that it yeah. says it's a vicious dungeon crawl yeah. Yeah. and it is it yeah. doesn't care <laughs> it, i don't have problems with any of that yeah. <laughs> you need to tell no 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 as we shouldn't that, 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 yeah. that's the whole yeah. that's what we're that's what we're playing for us it's on the tin right yeah. yeah yeah that's what i mean it's like uh just as a as a I, I, it was more like a, a warning to anyone who's who's looking at this going i'm gonna run this for my friends yeah. it's like they need to know that you're running this yeah which yeah. is like there needs to, to be buy-in on this like yeah yeah you like to like, martin's your point character's gonna die yeah yeah right but to like to martin's point about like you meta like know what you're doing like going all guns blazing mm -hmm. like turn it on your head because if you go into it because the first room is a primary example we didn't attack the the old crazy guy in the first room because we're not murder hobos and we yeah. don't just attack everything on site he didn't attack us right away so we were like oh maybe we can garner some information from this person yeah for the rest of the dungeon and then it obviously it backfired on us but if if we followed the opposite perspective and it's like oh that guy's crazy uh, Jinx, fireball him. Let's just get him out of the way real quick. Come on, I, let's do this. I will this. say, there is a reason to attack him. It's that every he looks single evil in the month... Picture. In the <laughs> well, no, it's because you, you've just... It's, it's been said that we came from a monastery where all the monks were dead, mm -hmm. and he's wearing the same robes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's not dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. And he's covered in blood. So... Mm. Yeah. Did he have something to do with that? You know, like, that's... You've got a reasonable MO as a player to be like, yeah, no, this guy's fucking trouble. And then you find out he's a fucking vampire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I'm just saying, like, attacking him off the bat, not necessarily a bad idea. Because yeah. you know, if you listened to the little introduction that you did, that... Being... 
he's either the sole survivor or the fucking perpetrator. Yeah. I'll also so say... So what would you rather... <laughs> err on the side of caution. Let's kill an innocent person because he might be evil. <laughs> I mean, you are, when you're playing, when you're playing pulp, pulp fancy characters, it's actually not yeah. necessarily totally out of the... Out of the yeah. Um, yeah, it's in the genre that we're Out of the in. realm, yeah. yeah. Um, but I... I, I will say too for anybody who's also looking at this if you are somebody who plays dcc or osr games because you like short combat this is also not nope. a dungeon i would I recommend because this is the closest to like actual like 5e combat i think i've run since shadow the demon lord uh <laughs> last year for my home group like we that that vampire fight was an hour and a half like two hours yeah. like it was it was a long fight like it was a, it was a yeah. good amount of time because yeah. obviously you guys got the extra rounds now that sort of stuff or whatever but like it was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of different environmental stuff. So I'm sure it just comes to the like, high level anyway, but that is also yeah. A, so yeah, as you've got so many more actions per round, mm. and like the things players can do are bigger, for the most part. Mm. Like obviously, if you're a dwarf or a warrior, that's not necessarily the case, but you do have a way, way better chances of pulling off the shit you were trying to pull off earlier. Yeah. I'll tell you what, when your mighty <laughs> when your mighty deed die is like a d10. Right? <laughs> Yeah, and, um, and I'll just throw up the spell list on screen here for the three spellcasters, mm. and you'll see just how, like, just the long line of spells you guys have to choose from of, like, oh, shit, what should I do mm. in this moment? There's so much extra stuff to choose from than yep. before. Well, also, at this level, um, the you get access to the higher rolls on those spells, and those spells can get really wordy. Yes. So, like, yeah. a lot of the times, you'll be like, okay, I'm going to go up this spell, and you roll, like, a, a 30, and it's like, okay, guys, give me a minute while I, I check Just out the algebra and, and, uh, and figure out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or roll like four different yeah. dice to see what actually turns yes. out by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like it, those, some of those spells can be pretty wordy at that, at a high level. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's Crypto Double Lich. Uh, no flaws. How they recommend it? <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to make it clear that um, we're, we're, we didn't rag on this module because we died on the first level. Uh, there's no. no animosity <laughs> towards it because we didn't make it. <laughs> but see, there's none on my part for certain. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you. Um, but yeah, you know, it's as I said, it's a different design philosophy to a lot of the standard. Done RPG adventures, and I think it's best as minus for ideas. But yeah. like, if you want to do the whole thing, you fucking can. I Absolutely. Don't, I don't do that. Yeah. No, I love to hear how people enjoy it, how it goes. I know some people in some discords I've been I'm, I frequent. There's people who are running it mm. currently in both Five E and DCC. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah. I have to mm. say, um, I have played um, Tomb of Horrors in Five E, uh, and Alex, you ran this better than my experience in a similar <laughs> style of dungeon um because the when i when i played it uh the dm wanted the players to get hit by every single trap oh. because he just had it in his head that like if they didn't then they they're miss out that's not the dungeon that then missing missing out. Out on the dungeon yeah no there's there's no <laughs> point if you can't bypass the traps then i guess everybody should just shut up and let me monologue the entire dungeon and just uh <laughs> tell me how much yeah. how much hit points you have left and then we'll that other like, like literally what's the point if you can't get past the really shitty the shitty thing is like how are yeah. you supposed to have fun at mm. all you know i i remember um and martin you're probably aware of this one of the rooms has a bunch of pillars in it but there's like a pillar every like 10 feet or so like and it's a huge room and it's just like uh. dozens and dozens of pillars now <laughs> in the module if you touch the pillar you float to the ceiling and get sort of sucked into like a trap that'll kill you but because the room was this huge room of pillars i walked into it and i was like oh this looks weird and the dm goes okay what do you want to do it's like okay well first of all i don't want to touch anything <laughs> because it's like it, it was so awkward it's like i'm just gonna sort of look at things and sort of like, try to figure it out and yeah yeah so i was like there's a huge room of these pillars and i and so he on the spot instituted a house rule that oh my god you had to make reflex checks not to accidentally touch the pillars oh. you know you See, specifically put, said you were oh. not going to touch the pillars i specifically said clear. i don't want to touch anything yeah. i don't want to touch the pillars and he was like oh, okay well give me a reflex save oh you accidentally brushed up against one come on okay so here's like... what i'm gonna say steve is this your old group <laughs> yeah is this your yeah old group, of course steve? Hey, steve. hey steve <laughs> fuck them <laughs> of course hey, hey steve's friends if you're listening to this you sound like the group from hell <laughs> um yeah that's 
I'll let you decide if I'm just gonna cut that Google. out, Steve. Hey, it's okay, buddy. Uh, you put in whatever you want to put in. Uh, <laughs> like holy shit! Like oh, yeah, no, that'll, really that'll be that'll be another trap. video, just oh, breaking yeah. down Steve's Steve's psychology of uh, of, his, of his group. Be, it's a video per. Oh, it's just a therapy just session with us. Yeah, <laughs> only the patrons get to see that. Yeah, video. that's the patrons only. <laughs> just how my yeah. friend got abused for years. Yeah, we'll, we'll sit and down. We're all there on the. Go ahead. Videos and they like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll be a, a, a patron video you have to subscribe to if you want to see me cry for 20 minutes yeah. and a half an hour. <laughs> I've, um, listen, I've seen your discords, Alex. People want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> They're brutal. They, uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, that, was, that was a lot uh, of fun. Thank you, man. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'm looking forward to whatever we do next. Yeah. Definitely. Bye, everybody. Just nice.